Welcome to the Dubuque Fighting Saints Broadcast Network. Tonight, the Saints hit the ice as they hunt for their sixth Clark Cup championship. Catch the action right here all season long. Three and a half in overtime, an empty net for the Saints in OT. Pekarsik, right side, cross ice speed for Dick. The wrister, they score! And now, it's time for Dubuque Fighting Saints hockey. Here's Josh Starr. From I'm on Arena, the Fighting Saints, game number two on the weekend against the Youngstown Phantoms as Dubuque hosting Youngstown in a big Eastern Conference series. My name's Josh Starr. Last night in this building, a 5-4 to four Youngstown win in a shootout. Tonight, the two teams enter tied at the top of the Eastern Conference with points on the line tonight in Dubuque. We're excited to have the action for you tonight. It's Military Appreciation Night. The Saints in their camo jerseys again tonight. And last night, it was uh, you know a little bit of a back and forth contest between these two teams. Each team had two separate one goal leads during regulation. Neither held them. It went to overtime and then a shootout. Youngstown scoring the only goal of the shootout with Finn McLaughlin. So the Saints, they're 10-2, 1-2, 23 points in the Eastern Conference. Youngstown, 11-3, 1-0. They have 23 points as well. And in their last 13 games, Youngstown, 11-1-1 and after starting the season, 0-2. Get you all set for the game tonight here on the pregame show as the Saints take on the Phantoms. The Saints... Chick-fil-A power play. Well, last night was a first for the Saints power play. They went 0 for 3. It was the first time all season in which they had an attempt at the power play and failed to score at least one goal. Only one other game they didn't score a power play goal. It's because they didn't get a chance on October 14th against Fargo. So the Saints still 37.5% on the power play this season. And that's the Chick-fil-A power play update for tonight. The Fighting Saints penalty kill is brought to you by Crawford North. Each time the Fighting Saints are successful in the penalty kill this season, Crawford North will make a donation to One Goal. One Goal's mission is to provide fun, affordable training and equipment to youth hockey players and continue the growth of hockey in Dubuque. Last night, one for two. Saints PK now at 80.4% on the season giving up a couple of power play goals in the last few games Crawford North Dubuque's premier provider for HVAC services welded fabrication and plumbing they offer commercial and residential services for all your service needs Kevin Radler well he'll get the nod again tonight for the Saints and the Fighting Saints and Great Clips are on a mission this season to give back to vets in our community for each save one of your Fighting Saints goaltenders make throughout the season, Great Clips will make a donation to the Veterans Freedom Center on Kerper Boulevard. The Saints jersey auction post game tonight in house. Well, the proceeds from that going to the Veterans Freedom Center as well. Raylor with 21 saves on 25 shots last night, 409 total saves for Fighting Saints goalies this year. Great Clips. It's gonna be great. We're gonna take our first break here on the pregame show. When we come back, our conversation with the head coach, Kirk McDonald.
Back on the Fighting Saints pregame show, joined by head coach Kirk McDonald. As Saints wrap up a weekend set with the Youngstown Phantoms. And Kirk, last night a 5-4 shootout loss. What were your overall observations from last night? Uh, not our best effort. Um, you know, really didn't make them work for much of their offense. Um, you know, I think as a staff, feel like three of their goals were really preventable. You know, you give them the power play goal five on three, but the other ones were just, again, lack of detail on our part, you know, um, not being dialed in. So um, I think we, we can do a better job, you know, with our puck decisions and, and backtracking and things like that. And uh, I think we'll, we'll, we'll give ourselves a chance tonight. Talk a lot about it, um, you know, the last few games and throughout the whole season. But uh, fourth line again, uh, bottom six contributing. Uh, Teddy Merrill goals in back-to-back games. So what have you seen from that group and uh, Teddy specifically? Yeah, they had a great game. Um, I thought, you know, their goal was a great example of what we should be trying to do. Uh, you know, 200 feet really started with the D zone faceoff about 90 seconds prior to the goal where, uh, you know, we won a puck battle, uh, you know, basically lost the face off, but won the puck back. Got it down, possessed a puck, you know, forced the ozone face off. Again, then we lost a face off, we lost, but we got the puck back. And then again, we got pucks to the net, created some havoc, uh, you know, and it's crazy when you get to the, the blue paint, good things happen. So, um, you know, again, great job by them, and, and hopefully, especially for Teddy, things continue. Tonight, uh, trying to get more pressure to the net and, and get more pucks on goal? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's always tough if, if, if you're turning pucks over at the blue line. It's tough to establish yourself in the O zone. So, uh, yeah, we just got to do a better job through the neutral zone tonight, um, taking care of the puck. And when we do that, we'll, we'll spend more time in the offensive end and in turn, we'll, we'll probably force the goalie to make more saves. Big crowd expected tonight. Does the uh, environment uh, add anything to the game tonight? You know, I think we just need to play within ourselves. I think sometimes guys can get overexcited because of a big crowd. Just go play hockey. Um, you know, I think when we play the way we, we are capable of and the way we want to, um, we'll get the crowd into the game. You know, we don't need to worry about that. And um, we're excited and always, always happy when we do have a large crowd. All right. Thank you, Kurt. Back inside, I'm on Arena. The Fighting Saints and Progressive Processing are proud to bring you the Hormel Complete Complete Game Challenge. When your Fighting Saints win the game, outshoot their opponent, and win the special teams battle to complete the challenge, Progressive Processing and Hormel will be donating to local food pantries throughout Dubuque. Find your perfect job today by visiting progressiveprocessingjobs.com for complete games for the Saints this season. 
Last one was in Omaha back in the middle of October. Saints trying to put together a full effort here tonight. But the offense still is pacing the league. 78 goals for the Saints. Dubuque Screw Products is the proud founding partner of the One Goal Mission. One Goal's mission is to provide fun, affordable training and equipment to youth hockey players and continue the growth of hockey in Dubuque. For each goal scored by the Fighting Saints this season, Dubuque Screw Products will make a donation to the Veterans Freedom Center, or excuse me, to the Dubuque Youth Hockey Association with a goal of growing the sport of hockey in Dubuque. It's Veterans Day. We have the veterans on our mind tonight. The Saints with 78 goals, one more than two cities to lead the league. Dubuque Screw Products, world-class precision machining. We'll get you tonight's lineup. Youngstown going with the same starting forward group as last night. Charlie Serrato at center, Ryan Botter on the left, former Saint Mikey Burchill on the right. The rest of the forward line, Brandon Svoboda, he's a sharp strap pick headed to BU. Hill center, Sam Ranallo and Miles Gunty. Braden Clark centers Kuzma Veronin and Adam Patilla. Grant Young out last night in the night. Centers the fourth line, Hunter Ramos on the left, Brecken Smith on the right. Christian Chua is the extra forward. Andrew Strathman, the team captain for Youngstown. He's back in the lineup tonight. He was suspended last night. He slides into the top D pair. He'll start with Tory Pittner, who scored twice last night. Luke Osborne plays alongside Finn McLaughlin, Jack Wilson and Tomesh Machu, and then it's Connor DeHaro as the extra defenseman. Owen Bartoskevich gets the nod once again for Youngstown. He made 15 saves last night on just 19 shots face. The Saints trying to get more pressure on him tonight, but his 926 save percentage tops in the league. His 206 goals against average. Fourth, he has an 8, 1, 1, and 0 record this season. Colin Wynn is the backup from the Youngstown head coach, Ryan Ward. For the debut fighting Saints, they'll start up front, Jake Sandriol, Centering Jay Reader and Michael Barron. Reader on a six game point streak. His four game streak of having multiple points snapped last night, but he did score a night ago. Michael Barron's on the left wing there. Eric Paulson centers Uri Pekarsik back in the lineup tonight after missing the last two games. Gavin Corkworth on the right wing. Charlie Aaron will center Noah Powell and Teddy Merrill. Merrill with goals in back to back games. Andrew King. Centers Nick Romeo and Colin Frank. Ryan Aronson in his second USHL game. The extra four for the Saints. Fisher Scott and Yona Bison and start on the blue line. Lucas St. Louis, he had two assists last night. He starts, or he plays alongside Caleb Dick. Shalem, Seamus Powell and Jaden Jubinville as always. And then Luke Malba, the extra defenseman tonight. Kevin Rayler in his 13th game of the season. He's 7-2, 1-2, an 896 save percentage. 3.31 goals against the average and one shutout. Thatcher Bernstein in the backup from the head coach, Kirk McDonald. Tonight's wellness report is brought to you by River Bluff CBD, the premier name in CBD products in Illinois. Fighting Saints, those out of the lineup tonight. Matthew Desiderio, Josh Giuliani, Chase LaPinta, River Bluff CBD aims to provide you with the best quality CBD product on either side of the Mississippi River. Help reduce the stigma in our community. Our last break on the pregame show. When we come back, it's the Saints and the Phantom right after this.
round of applause of appreciation from those who have helped to defend. Attention to the flag is Katie Gallagher, who performs tonight's national anthem. In front of a sold-out crowd tonight at Imon Arena, the Dubuque Fighting Saints taking on the Youngstown Phantoms. Both teams tied at the top of the Eastern Conference with 23 points each. And we have game two of a weekend series between them tonight. In Dubuque, tonight's broadcast is driven by Finn and Ford and Kia, the official vehicles of your Fighting Saints. Stop by their locations off Highway 20 as Finn and Ford and Kia aim to change the perception of car buying. Quick, comfy, and fun. Finn and Ford and Kia, you're winning with Finn and we're just about ready from Dubuque. The Saints looking to bounce back after a 5-4 to four shootout yeah, loss a night ago. And they are looking for a better start tonight and more traffic to the front of the net in front of Owen Bardaskevich. We welcome in Jim Leitner to the broadcast. Jim, it's a great night here, a sold out crowd. What do the Saints need to do? Well, they need to play better than they played last night. As to a man, they were not real happy with the way they performed. And, you know, they think they were a, a better hockey team than they showed last night. So uh, I think they, they, they feel like they gave away too many freebies last night. Uh, free many, free many, uh, too many free opportunities to score, and, and that uh, ended up hurting them and dug them in a really early hole too. So they're gonna come, have to come out with a little bit more fire early in this game and uh, not give away as many freebies as they did last time. Yeah, a couple of the goals they gave up just kind of outworked and not making the best plays with the puck. We heard from the head coach Kurt McDonald just about that on the pregame show. Saints looking to play a clean game tonight. Saints head left to right in the opening period in their camouflage green sweaters trimmed in black with stars across the bottom and Saints written in gray and black across the chest. Youngstown in white heading right to left. We're ready to go. Reader against Serato. The puck is down. We're underway for game number two of this weekend set between the top two teams in the Eastern Conference. Youngstown rattles in deep to the left. Saints in as Dubuque will find. Reader chips ahead, it hits something on the Dubuque bench. And we have our first whistle 15 seconds in. No score early on as the Saints taking on the Phantoms for the second straight night. A 5-4 shootout win for Youngstown a night ago. They were without their captain, Andrew Strathman, who was serving a suspension. He's back tonight for Youngstown. Face off early on, 
Saints end, 15 seconds in, near circle to the left. No score, it's one by Dubuque. They'll spear across to the left wing and out to center. Weisenen chucks it in on his backhand. Saints go to work, offensive end. Their forecheck really never got going last night. It's been a staple for them this season. They're trying to work on it tonight and force some issues for Youngstown in its own end. Youngstown able to break out smoothly here. Right to left, Strathman left wing, top of the circle, spins it across the slot. Tipped away to the far wall, St. Ten. Far boards, Youngstown in behind the net, and then Sandriol after Scott sealed off a of Phantom. Outlets off the tape of Bison in, but it moves to the neutral zone, and then Youngstown will corral it back in its own end. A minute in, no score. Sold out crowd tonight in debut. Right wing, Mikey Burchill fires in front. They score. It tipped off a body in the slot, and it was Sam Ranallo right alone at the top of the blue paint, able to hammer it home. He scored the first goal last night. He scores the first goal tonight, and it's a 1-0 Youngstown lead, 101 in. Last night, it was 58 seconds in. Tonight, it's 101 in, and the Saints trail one to nothing early. Well, they took advantage of a fortunate bounce, but again, the Fighting Saints, you gotta be in a situation where you, you're not allowing those fortunate bounces, and uh, you know, they, they wanted to get off to a better start than they did last night, and unfortunately, they haven't, and they're gonna play from behind again, and you know, hopefully it doesn't take them quite as long to get back into it as it did last night. They move back into the offensive zone. Youngstown end to the right. It's flipped to the slot and then taken out by Svoboda. 120 in, Youngstown on top, 1-0. Puck in behind the Dubuque net. It's Kalen Bick sorching up the right wing, and he has Uri Pekarsik to center into the offensive zone. Right wing, Paulson, side of the net, stuffs it on, and Bartoskevich makes the save. It's Youngstown fighting and moving out to center. They chip in and go off for a change. Saints go back for it. Uri Pekarsik out with Eric Paulson and Gavin Cornforth. Pekarsik back in after missing the last two games. He moves up the right wing all alone into the offensive end. Tried to cut to the slot. It was sealed off by McLaughlin and turned in behind his own net. Two minutes in, it's one nothing. Youngstown, Clark into the Saints end. Rips it on, gloved by Raidler. He holds on. Gunty credited with the only assist on Ronaldo's tally. And the Saints down one to nothing early. Face off coming in the Dubu Dubuque end to the left. Got to be a huge shot of confidence for the Phantoms last night. They got a big win last night to move into a tie for first place. Got an early lead again here tonight and put the Fighting Saints back on their heels. So big road weekend for the Phantoms. A chance to take over sole possession of first place in the Eastern Conference. Last night it was the same start, three seconds sooner, but Youngstown scored early. The Saints were able to tie it up and head to the first intermission, even at one. Saints have had some trouble in the first periods lately. They gave up four last Saturday night in the first to Sioux City. Puck moved to center, a Saint offended, and it will be a penalty against Youngstown. A hook the call as Charlie Aaron draws the call, and the Saints are headed to their first Chick-fil-A power play of the night. McLaughlin going off for a hook. The Saints 0 for 3 last night. The first time this season the Saints have had at least one chance on the power play and didn't convert in a game. They get their first shot here down 1-0 2-0-9 into the first. Offensive end of the right near circle. They send Reeder with Sandriol, St. Louis, Bisonin, and Pekarsik. Reeder's going to take the draw against Braden Clark. And the Saints' first power play is underway. Reeder wins the draw back to the top of the circle. Bison in across sides. Left wing, it's Pekarsik surveying there. Head up all the way, goes side of the net, far wing. Reeder dump, back to the circle. Pekarsik, his cross ice feed off a Youngstown skate and out to center. All the way back down the ice. Raidler will play it off of Burchill. He almost stuffed it right back into the net, but he flubbed it wide on the backhand. The Saints. Risky in their own end with the goaltender Raidler, but they're able to move ahead. Left wing, Sandriel, 30 seconds in to the power play. He stopped as he gets into the zone, and it's cleared all the way back down. Raidler, another chance with the puck. 
This time he goes hard off the glass, tipped into the offensive zone by Reeder. He'll have to go chase Strathman first there for Youngstown. The Phantoms rip up the boards and out to center. Patilla racing into the Saints end. Left wing, shorthanded, drop past Strathman. Looking in front, the shot blocked by St. Louis, who slid to a knee. Saints with a two on one, left to right. Pekarsik and Reeder, Reeder, right circle. Across ice, Pekarsik bobbled, and he never got the shot away. Into the corner, he picks it back up, and his pass up top goes all the way out. Seamus Powell retreats for it into his own end. 3.20 into the first. There's 50 left on the first power play chance of the game for the Saints. They went 0 for 3 last night. Still 37.5% on the season. Into the offensive zone, center point. Seamus Powell set up. 38 left on the power play. Saints down 1-0 early. Paulson near half wall. To the point, Powell back to the left wing. Kalen Bick. He scored a goal from the top of the slot last night. He's there now. Holds on. Right side. He flubbed the pass. And it's chipped ahead but not out. Dick keeps in. Left side. Powell down the wall. 20 on the power play. He'll go cross ice. Right wing. It's Paulson top of the circle. On his forehand. He'll play back to the point. Has Powell there. Back down the wall in near corner. Paulson looking in front. He goes below the goal line. And then serving from the bottom of the circle. Flips it across ice. Dick comes away with it left circle. Two on the power play. Powell at the point is shot. Deflected up and out of play as McLaughlin gets out of the box. 4-11 in. one nothing Youngstown. Saints unable to convert on the power play. Phantoms doing a nice job on the penalty kill, and, and I thought they had the better opportunities there. A couple odd man rushes on the penalty kill. Uh, they weren't able to convert. And, uh, but again, last night, the fighting, as you mentioned, the Saints did not score a power play goal, but they scored like a couple seconds afterwards. So it's, you know, a quasi power play goal, even though it doesn't go down in the books. But uh, again, I think Youngstown's done a nice job of killing off those man advantages. Twice last night, the Saints scored goals seven seconds after a power play ended. Tonight, unsuccessful in their first chance. Offensive zone draw, they win it, but Malbuff and Powell miscommunicated. The puck moves back to center and chipped in to the Saints end. Botterill first to it behind the Dubuque net to the left. He'll go to the point near wing. Wilson across ice, right side. Serrato shattered his stick as he let the shot fly. It goes into the corner. Saints dig at it in the far corner wall. Noah Powell there dealing with the broken stick. It's in his skates. Puck trickles up the boards, and it's loose there for Charlie Aaron to skate forward. The puck hit the loose stick, but Aaron's still able to corral into the offensive zone. His pass tipped away and then moves out to center. Swatted backward by Merrill, and then he grabs it back from Jubinville. Back into the zone just about five minutes in. one nothing Youngstown. Merrill's shot blocked, and then he knocks down a phantom. That's going to be a penalty against Merrill. And the Saints are going to head to the Crawford North penalty kill for the first time tonight. 4.55 in. Saints just unable to convert on a power play. Now they give away a penalty. Merrill goes off for tripping. And the Saints penalty kill gets its first shot of the night. Game kind of changed last night, Jim, early in the third on a Youngstown power play. Yep, the uh, five on three power play, the Phantoms scored, and that's really that got them tied, and then they ended up scoring a, the go ahead goal shortly thereafter. But it, it gave them a big shot of momentum, and you know, it really was a key to them, uh, and it get, ended up getting that win. So just about five minutes in, Youngstown leading one to nothing on its first power play. They win the draw, Saints end to the left. Strathman from the point is shot, tipped up, and it goes into the far wall. Reeder tries to find it. He's stopped. Saints can't clear. Puck along the wall in the far corner. Trickles in behind the net. Near wing, Serrato. Holds on toward the top. Sandrial strips it. He rushes ahead. Right wing, shorthanded into the offensive zone. As Reeder cutting to the front, the pass was tipped away by Burchill, and Strathman goes in behind his own net. 30 seconds gone on the penalty to Teddy Merrill. Strathman starts forward. He was out of the lineup with a suspension last night. The Phantoms captain on the power play, slotting back into the lineup tonight. 14-20 to play in the first. 1-0 Youngstown, a goal 101 in by Sam Rinaldo. Puck all the way around the Saints net. Dubuque finds, Bison and clears all the way down. 105 left on the penalty kill for Dubuque. 14-10 remaining in this first period. It's 1-0 Youngstown. Second of four meetings between these two teams this year. They won't meet again until March in Ohio. It's Patilla moving into the Saints end. Youngstown on the power play for another 50. At the point, Pittner walks the line. He scored twice last night. Left wing, McLaughlin, top of the circle. 
He'll move to the side of the net. Stopped on front by Patilla. Stopped by Raylor. Paulson finds his clear swatted out of the air. Saints bench won it's a high stick called as it was played up top, but they still are able to get it to center and deep into the Youngstown end. 28 to go on the power play for Youngstown. 13 and a half in the first. One nothing Phantoms. McLaughlin enters the Saints end to the left. Far wing, Paulson stopped him but couldn't grab the puck. Left wing, it's Botterill all the way through. Tipped to the right wing. It is McLaughlin on the far wall. His shot hit Malba. He looks around, finds the puck, and outlets to Paulson. He has Barron right wing into the offensive end. He'll swing wide into the corner. Out in front, stuffed wide by Paulson. Short and a chance with one second left. And the Saints get Merrill out of the box. Barron skates back to center, loops into the offensive zone. Right side, a shot wide of the net. Off the end wall. St. Louis picks it up all the way across ice near wing. Barron spins it back in front. It's loose, but Youngstown finds Smith moving up the far wall. Out to center for Young. He steamrolls into the Saints end. Right side, a shot. Ticked up and out of play off a Saints stick. 12.43 left in the first. one nothing Youngstown, both teams. Unable to convert on their first power play. We'll be right back from the Butte. Finning, 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 finning. You're winning with finning. When you drive away in a finning car, you're winning with finning. And you're always treated like a superstar. You're winning with finning. We take pride in customer loyalty. We're leaders in the community. So come on down. Fighting Saints with a successful penalty kill. That means a donation from Crawford North to Youth Hockey in Dubuque. It's 1-0 Phantoms early on in the first 12.43 to play. Face-off coming in the Dubuque end to the left. Second meeting this weekend between these two teams. Tied at the top of the Eastern Conference. Face-off in the Dubuque end to the left. Andrew King will take... He wins, and St. Louis starts the Saints ahead. Colin Frank up the right side. Into the offensive zone. He'll chip it in. Saints will chase in behind. Dick activating from the blue line. Unable to grab it behind the net. It comes to center. St. Louis will wrap it back in. Bouncing wide of the goal, and it goes in behind for Youngstown to play up and out to center. Dick holds on at the red line. Right back in. Offensive end. 12-15 to play in the first. one nothing Youngstown. Dick to the near corner, offensive end, but he's turned off the puck. And it goes back in below. Saints able to keep it alive at first, but then the long stretch tipped in by Young deep to the Saints zone. Seamus Powell out behind his own net, has Young right on his back. Powell able to one-hand it to center. A big hit in the neutral zone by Romeo. Then the Saints move it forward with Andrew King as he takes a hit, dumps in, and goes off for a chain. 11.45 left in the first. one nothing Youngstown shots. 4-1 to one for the Phantoms. Veronin picks it up in the neutral zone for Youngstown. Deep into the Saints end, right wing, far wall. His pass back to the point, intercepted by Pekarsik. His outlet on the money for Cornforth. Left side into the offensive zone. He twirls at the blue line. Pass backward, taken by Veronin. Two on one for Youngstown. Veronin, right circle. Out in front, Pittner was a right-handed shot on the left wing. And the pass handcuffed him. Cornforth picks it up, out to center. Into the offensive zone. Pekarsik, bottom of the circle. The snapshot, it is stopped as it hit Bartoskevich and went up out of play. Bartoskevich, maybe a little bit stung by that, but Pekarsik back in the lineup tonight, flying around early. 11-14 to play in the first. one nothing Youngstown. Jim, it's a real big addition for the Saints to get Pekarsik. No question. Back. He's a he's a he's a talented player. He's a great he's a great skater who's, who does he's a great creator offensively and you know, he's a guy who's kind of got dinged up a little bit last weekend, and they did miss him last night. He does bring an element of speed and creativity and skill, so uh, I anticipate he's going to make a big difference in this one tonight. Really good vision on the ice, as you saw on that breakout pass just before as the Saints moved up the ice. Pekarsik with a chance there. They can't win the draw, though, that they got in the offensive zone. It's Youngstown back in, Saints end to the left. 11 to play in the first, one nothing Phantoms. Wrapped in behind, Gunty holds on, side of the Saints cage, and Raidler covers up there to take the whistle. 10.54 to play in the first, one nothing Youngstown as the Saints 
maybe settling in a little bit here in the first after the early goal against? Uh, again, I think that's the same thing happened last night. They kind of got put back on their heels a little bit by giving up a goal in the first minute or so. And, you know, now they're settling in and creating a little bit more. I'd like to see them not be quite so loose. They've had a couple couple bad turnovers that led to opportunities in transition for Youngstown. They have to tighten that up a little bit, especially after last night. And the captain out to take the defensive zone face off. He ties it up in the circle. They dig away. It's loose in his skates, and he's able to push it back to Fisher Scott. He fans on his first pass, grabs it, and outlets up the left wing. A Saint was dumped there. Fans want to call. They're not going to get it. Puck bouncing around in center. Reader into the offensive zone. Left wing out in front. It goes through Sandriel off to the right wing. And Ronaldo clanks it off the glass out to center for Svoboda. Into the St. 10. He'll twirl it back left wing. And Osborne shot blocked by Avizanin. He'll pick it up behind the net. Feed Scott. And the Saints will move ahead. Left to right. 10-20 in the first. Saints down 1-0. Reader schemes into the offensive zone. His centering feed knocked away. He has it back in the near corner. Trying to go in behind the net. Fan on the pass. And Ronaldo will start forward. Left wing will go cross ice to Serato, dancing into the Saints end. Tries to pirouette back in front. Barron intercepted it. His outlet tipped forward by Reader, who was at the end of a shift. The Saints will change players. 9.50 to go. Youngstown right to left into the Saints end, leading 1-0 in the first. Puck toward the point, tipped away by Noah Powell, and all the way back to the Youngstown zone. McLaughlin goes back for it at the red line. It's Mikey Burchill, scored in his return to Dubuque last night. Spent the last two seasons with the Fighting Saints. As it's turned in on net from Youngstown, covered by Raidler, we will take a break again here in Dubuque. 1-0 Youngstown, just past halfway mark in the first. Superstar, you're winning with Finnin. We take pride in customer loyalty. We're leaders in the community. So come on down and you will see. Finnin, Finnin, Finnin. You're winning with Finnin. Finnin. This is the Money Saints website. Click the link under the In the Community tab and register during tonight's game. Fighting Saints honoring some retired military members on the ice in the break as it's military appreciation night tonight it's presented by Hirschbach Motor Lines Saints jerseys to be auctioned off after the game tonight here in the arena uh, the proceeds going to the Veterans Freedom Center uh, Kerper Boulevard in Dubuque Saints trailing one to nothing 934 left in the first the defensive zone draw for Dubuque being outshot five to two. Last night for the Saints, they only mustered 19 shots on goal on Omen Bartoskevich. They scored four times, but Bartoskevich, even though his save percentage went down 13 points last night, he still leads the league with a 926 save percentage coming into play. Saints have to make him work a little bit harder than just two shots in the first 10 minutes of the game. Puck dumped in, Youngstown end to the right. Bartoskevich out of the net, up the wall, and Youngstown flies to center. Burchill seeming in, settles a bouncing puck. Dick able to tip it away from him as he tried to release the shot, and the Saints scoop it out to center. 9.08 left, opening period, second of two this weekend between the Phantoms and the Saints. Youngstown winning last night, 5-4 in a shootout. Youngstown ahead, 1-0 early on here. Into the Saints end, turn toward the front. Raylor pads it aside, and Noah Powell skates to center, left wing. Into the offensive zone, he'll chip it down the wall and chase himself. In the corner, he grabs it, he's dumped. He plays back to the point, has Seamus Powell there. The flip on net, punched away by Bartoskevich. Puck up the wall, Saints keep in. The pass back up top, intercepted Botterill. He's rushing ahead. Jubinville seals into the far wall. The drop pass to Serato, and Youngstown into the Saints end. Noah Powell intervenes, chips the center, and the Saints will go change. 8.25 to go in the first. It's 1-0 Youngstown. Sam Ranallo just 101 in for the second straight night. He scores in the opening stages of the first. Saints gave one up to Ranallo last night, 58 seconds in. Tonight it was 101 in. Michael Barron had the answer last night in the first to tie it up. Saints still looking for the evening goal so far in this one. Puck in the Youngstown end, right 
to the right. It's turned up the wall. Aronson out for his first shift of the night, his second USHL game. Stops it at the blue line. The Saints will rattle back in. Andrew King near wall, leaves to Aronson. Back down the boards, right side for King. Low to high, Scott, center point, fakes the shot. Then he lets it fly. It goes wide off the end glass. Andrew King picks it up behind the Youngstown net. 7.38 to play in the first. one nothing Phantoms. Saints strip behind the cage. And the Phantoms flip it all the way down the ice. Buys in and goes back for it. No icing, so the Saints will continue up the ice. Left to right. Buys in, long stretch, banked it into the zone. Romeo cancels the icing. Bardaskevich out of the net. Hard up the glass near wing. It bounces to center. Buys in, has it there. He'll go cross ice. Out of the reach of Paulson. Saints chop it ahead, and then Youngstown goes offside at the Saints. Blue line. 7 10 to play in the first. 1 0 Phantoms early on in this one. Well, the Fighting Saints uh, still haven't really got found their game yet, and I think you have to give Youngstown some credit in, in really forcing them out of the game they like to play. Only three shots on goal so far, and uh, I know the Fighting Saints made adjustments, but there are a few more that they're going to have to make to get more opportunities. Buck turn into the Saints end off the neutral zone draw. Patilla far corner, bottom of the circle, fires it on, saved by Raylor with the right shoulder. Buck bounces to the circle, and Eric Paulson shovels it off the glass. Under seven to play in the first, one nothing Youngstown. Saints really have not gotten their four check going as Youngstown moves up right wing. Odd man rush, turned all the way in front. Raylor way out of the blue paint, tipped it away from Clark who had an open net but couldn't get the puck. It goes back in behind. Patilla, far wall. Pekarsik chops at it, can't get it out. It's loose at the circle. Paulson lifts the stick of Clark. It's still loose in the slot. And then the Saints push ahead but not out. Osborne, right wing. Dances down the wall, far hash marks, Saints end to the left. Phantoms on the puck, he'll flip it toward the net. Osborne, it's chopped on net. Radler swats it out of the air with his stick into the near corner. Paulson against the wall there with Patilla. Puck comes up the boards. Pekarsik flips across. Fisher Scott gloves down and skates to center. 6.08 to play in the first. one nothing Youngstown. Saints dump in, Cornforth goes to chase. He wins the puck, near corner wall, sealed off. Reader comes to help, has Sandri all top of the circle, and then was swarmed by the Phantoms. Gunty takes it to center. Under six to play in the first. Reader forces a turnover in the neutral zone. Feeds Sandri all left wing. Cuts at the hash mark, side of the net for Reader. Out in front, it goes all the way through Barron, and out to center, past Caleb Dick at the blue line. Dick will go back into the neutral zone, grab the puck, feed Barron up the right side. Five and a half to play in the first. Barron's cross ice feed, stopped by Youngstown. The Phantoms will move ahead. Talked to Kurt McDonald before the game about what the Saints need to fix from last night. His number one answer was their play in the neutral zone, and the Saints still, just like that last play there, unable to play through the neutral zone. Everything has been a dump so far. Sandriel, far corner wall, offensive end, as the Saints dump it in, and they can't control. Strathman behind his own net. The forecheck getting to work. Up the near boards, Reeder holds on. Looking in behind the net, he has three phantoms around him. He lost the puck. Barron able to take it back. Sandriel cross sites to the point. Jubinville walks the line. The snap, tip wide. It goes to the far wing out behind the goal. And then covered up by Bartoskevich. Sandriel dumped in front of the net. And the whistle comes with 4.51 to go in the first. A 1-0 Youngstown lead. The Saints. Jim, kind of getting the floor check going a little bit on that shift. A little bit, yeah, but you're, you're exactly right. You'd have to, you have to, uh, can't rely on dump and chase and trying to recover against this team. They got a big physical defense core and they they can skate back and get the puck too. So uh, it's going to be key to get that floor check going and put some more pressure on the Phantoms and, you know, generate a little bit more ozone time. Saints send out Aaron with Frank and Merrill. Coaching staff really loves the way these three players have played bottom six in general. They have really been praising that group of players. Aaron is going to take the draw left circle. Offensive end of the right. He wins it. Jubinville at the point to Malba. He'll backhand down the wall. It's chopped at along the far boards. Played by Youngstown in behind the net. And Strathman will come away with it. 4.40 to go in the first. Phantoms leading it 1-0. Jubinville picks up in center for the Saints. He'll move in the right wing, offensive end. Merrill wraps it in behind the net. Far side, Frank, back below the goal line. Jubinville out in front, tipped away from Aaron, who is streaking in. Puck back to the point. Merrill flips it on. It bounces wide. 
Frank in behind the net, controls, he's dumped, and then Burchill will find and clear all the way down. Should be icing if Malbuff can win the race against Botterill, he does. The Saints will head back down to the Youngstown end for an offensive zone draw after the icing with 4-13 left in the first and a 1-0 lead for Youngstown. Been re really impressed by Young Youngstown's defense core this whole weekend. They've done a nice job of really preventing the Fighting Saints from getting a lot of uh, uh, a lot of those ozone time, and you know that's been key to this series so far. Clean face-off win for Youngstown. The outlet blocked by Eric Paulson. Pekarsik chips it toward the front. It goes by Cornforth. He ties it up far wall. Scott keeps in for the Saints. He'll pump it toward the front. Bounces right to Cornforth. Drop pass. Paulson, the one-timer. Saved by Bardaskevich with the left shoulder. And then Botterill will take it out to center and flip it in deep to the Saints zone. Scott will go back for it. That's the best chance of the night so far for the Saints. Eric Paulson, the league's leading point scorer. Stopped by Bardaskevich. Puck in the neutral zone. Youngstown to the Saints blue line to the left. It trickles back toward the Youngstown zone. And the Phantoms will take over there. Puck off of Machu skate, back in deep to the Youngstown end. Three and a half to play in the first. Machu able to recover and go back to grab it. His outlet out of the reach of Smith. It bounces all the way down. Bison in back behind his own net. Starts the Saints ahead as King, he'll loop forward to center ice. Left wing, head up all the way across the blue line. Offensive end will swing to the right side. Chips it to himself in the corner, grabs it there, shovels it back up the wall, left wing for Fisher Scott. Down to the hash marks, chucks it back in behind. King cycles back up to the point. Noah Powell, right wing. Back in behind the net, Romeo. Saints all around the perimeter, unable to get to the front, and then it's chipped out to center by Youngstown. Powell gloves down, chips it across, and Wilson flips it back ahead. Young dumps in, Saints end. Dubuque will go back for it, Youngstown changing lines. Two and a half to play. Opening period, it's one nothing Youngstown. Puck Got in behind, him. and a penalty is being called against Youngstown. Interference spotted, and with 2.32 left in the first, down by one, Dubuque heads back to its second Chick-fil-A power play of the night. Yeah, Pietro, uh, Patilla got his, uh, look, he might have got an elbow up. It was inter interference, but he, uh, I think we don't know where the Fighting Saints forward was, but his head kind of snapped back. It's an easy call to make, especially long right in front of the officiating crew, so another opportunity on the power play for the Saints. Paulson will take the draw, 2.32 left in the first, down one nothing. Far circle to the right. Youngstown out zone to start the Saints second power play of the period. Paulson wins the draw straight back. It splits the players at the point. The Saints have to go back for it. Seamus Powell all the way around behind his own net and starts the Saints up. Cornforce stopped as he gets to the line and then it's cleared to the neutral zone. Seamus Powell back to it there. Up the right wing, Paulson across ice, stopped at the blue line, and Clark rushes forward shorthanded. He has Burchill cutting toward the front. The pass went in on goal, and Radler covered it. 132 left on the power play. 204 remaining in this first period. It's 1-0 Youngstown. The same power play this weekend it really hasn't gotten going. No, and actually tonight especially, I think Youngstown's had more opportunities. Odd man rushes the other way on the Fighting Saints power play, so they're gonna have to clean up uh, clean up the puck control, and it's a very aggressive penalty kill, so, so if they get an opportunity, they're gonna go the other way and try to score. The Saints have a D zone face off on the power play, 132 left on the interference, minor to Patilla. Saints win the draw on their own zone. Jameis Powell up the left wing, Kalen Dick. Screams for left side into the offensive zone. He has Barron, he'll tip it in deep. Paulson grabs at the circle. Works back to the point. Powell off across left side. Kalen Bitt works his way to the high slot. Feeds right wing, top of the ring for Paulson. Bottom of the circle. Steps up the snap on net. Saved by Bartoskevich. Rebound stuffed in the blue paint and it somehow trickled wide. It was Pittner up the wall. Kalen Bitt kept it in and they dig away on the near half wall. One minute left on the power play. 90 in the first period. Saints down one nothing. They still dig away in front of the Youngstown bench, still in the phantom zone. It's inching towards center and it does move to center. Seamus Powell picks up there. 
chips it right back in. Hitting her to the side of his net. Hard up the far boards and out all the way down. 40 seconds left on the power play. One at 10 in the period. Saints down one up. Opening period, second game of the weekend between these two teams. St. Louis out to center. He's dumped as he moves into the offensive zone. Reader able to chip it in deep. Final minute of the first. Saints on the power play for 20 more seconds, but Youngstown finds and clears all the way down. Power play not able to get set up so far in this game. Second chance, just 10 seconds left on it. 40 to go in the period. Reader left to right into the offensive zone. He falls down. St. Louis on the near half wall. Toward the point, looking for Bison in, but he's stripped, and Strathman moves to center. Out of the box is Patilla. Saints can't convert. Strathman into the Saints end, left wing. Tried to feed Patilla, hit a Saints skate. Goes in behind the net, trickles out in front, and Radler covers up. Wasn't sure where it was at first, but he's able to cover up and some pushing and shoving after the whistle with 19.2 left in the period. Yeah, it's a big physical team. They want to create traffic in front, and until you answer it and you start punching back, they're going to just keep on doing it, and uh, it's going to be key. You know, Saints are going to have to pick up that physicality a little bit to, to answer this Youngstown team that's hungry for a second straight win here. They like to chirp, too. I mean, it's... These two teams didn't really get along last year. No, they didn't. It's, it's always been a tough matchup for the Fighting Saints. Going back as long as these two teams have been in the league, it's always been a... T Youngstown has always been a tough matchup for the Fighting Saints. Defending Clark Cup champions in town this weekend. They won in the shootout last night against Dubuque. Saints win the draw on their own end in the final 20 of the first. 1-0 Youngstown, Dubuque flips ahead. Juvenville past Noah Powell. It will go for icing with 6.3 left in the period. Saints really didn't get to their identity last night in the game, and that's kind of what we talked with Kurt McDonald about before the game. He wanted them to get back to the high intensity, hunting pucks in the offensive zone, creating problems for Youngstown. But so far tonight, it's been much of the same as last night. Saints really haven't been able to cause those problems like they've been able against other teams. Late face off, Saints end to the left. It's turned to the side behind the net. Juvenville hard up the glass, kept in with one second left. Pittner gets the shot away, but Noah Powell blocks it and the horn sounds. So after one, it's one to nothing Youngstown. A goal just 101 in. And the Saints head to the first intermission, trailing tonight one to nothing. Shots seven apiece. We will take a break here from Dubuque. It's one nothing Youngstown after 20 minutes of play right here on the Saints Broadcast Network.
Josh Starr joined by Saints forward Michael Barron as the Saints take on the Youngstown Phantoms tonight, the second of two against Youngstown. Um, you know, first off, Michael, uh, you know, starting the season off, you you know, be able to contribute early on in the season. Uh, how uh, how nice has it been to be able to settle in like that? Yeah, it feels good to settle in just like that. And you know, last year I got called up a couple times and didn't record any points, but now I like, can settle in and you know, just contributing to the team is just it's great and. It's keep playing my game and just keep doing well as a team. Being able to play on the same line as uh, Jake Sandriel and Jay Reader, uh, how fun is that and uh, how do they help you out there on the ice? Yeah, I mean, under the circumstances, I got moved up and I love the opportunity to play with them and, you know, they, I feel we're just connecting really well and we're just playing good and, you know, we just got to keep it rolling and keep, you know, just playing good. Youngstown, a uh, team toward the top of the standings as well with, with you guys. Uh, how important is it to play a, a full game against them? Yeah, this is huge. I mean, 60 minutes, we got to play hard and, you know, just get these two wins and, you know, just keep up in the standings is, is important for us. So, All right. Thank you, Michael.
Fighting Saints down one at nothing after 20 minutes. Quick intermission report. Shots in the first, seven to seven. Saints down one at nothing. And really not getting much going. 0 for 2 on the power play. Youngstown 0 for 1. And Jim, uh, it's just uh, been kind of slim pickings for the Saints trying to get anything started against this Youngstown team. Yeah, they're a really stingy defensive crew, and they, they're big, physical, and they, they get to lose pucks real quickly, and that's that's a tough uh, matchup for a Fighting Saints team that likes to hunt pucks and likes to, you know, likes to create havoc in the offensive zone, and they just really haven't had a lot of opportunities where they've really created a lot of, uh, a lot of chaos in the offensive zone, and I think you have to give uh, Youngstown some credit for, for really taking them out of their game and not allowing those opportunities. The Saints only had two shots the first half of the period. They got five more later in the period, but still trailing it one to nothing. After 20 minutes of play, scores around the league. One nothing Des Moines over Madison early in the third. Madison falling last night to Chicago. They gave up nine to the steal last night. It's one nothing early in the third. Des Moines on top. Green Bay leading 3-1 over Lincoln starting the third. Waterloo ahead 2-1 after 2 against Tri-City. Fargo beat Sioux City last night. They're on top again, 3-0 after 40. Omaha, they got their second win of the season, first in regulation last night. They are trailing 2-1 over Sioux Falls. Cedar Rapids ahead 3-1 over Muskegon after 2. And the Saints down 1-0 after 1. We'll step aside. We'll be right back with the second period here on the Saints Broadcast Network. Windstar Lines is a family-owned and operated local Dubuque charter bus company that has been serving customers nationwide since 1995. With eight Midwestern hubs and a varied fleet, including minibuses, motor coaches, sleeper buses, and vans, we are able to accommodate any group, large or small, to any destination near or far. With over 20 years in the travel and tourism industry, our reputation for superior safety, impeccable equipment, and unparalleled customer service makes us the right choice for your group's transportation needs. Now hiring full and part-time drivers. Go Windstar. Progressive Processing, a Hormel Foods company, is hiring great people across all shifts with new starting wages of $20.60 per hour to $25 per hour with the potential to earn up to $27 per hour. The team at Progressive Processing takes pride in producing popular and trusted Hormel Foods products that are sold in grocery stores across the country. They provide industry-leading benefits, a culture of engagement, and a variety of schedule options. See their openings and find your perfect job today at ProgressiveProcessingJobs.com. Hey, Lowe's High for your Dubuque Fighting Saints as they make their return to the Imon Arena, formerly the Dubuque Ice Arena. The Imon Arena is home to your Dubuque Fighting Saints, and this season is going to be nothing short of epic as the Saints fight to keep their Cowbell Cup title and keep it out of the hands of Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, and Des Moines. The coveted Clark Cup is also in sight and the ultimate goal and trophy for the year. Don't miss any of the action this season and get your tickets now at DubuqueFightingSaints.com. Want to make it to multiple games this season? Check out the flex plan options that start as low as only $9 per game. Party zones are also available, and they make for a great place to host your next birthday, bachelor or bachelorette party, or corporate night out. Get more information as well as group ticket rates at DubuqueFightingSaints.com now. It's time to pack our house and halos high at the Imon Arena for your Dubuque Fighting Saints. Hey, it's me, the Crawford Guy. Is your water heater not working? Do you have a leaky pipe or faucet? Is there a drain that isn't draining? Crawford to the rescue. Crawford plumbers and drain cleaners are experts at providing real solutions for your real problems. For plumbing installation and repair, make the right call. Crawford Company. Heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and drain cleaning. Visit CrawfordNorth.com. At Great Clips, we want you to feel good about getting a great haircut. That's why we created the Great Care Promise, our commitment to keeping everyone as safe as possible in the salon. From contactless online check-in and social distancing to rigorous sanitization and mask requirements at all Great Clips locations, we're doing more to keep our salons clean and comfortable. Check in online and get a ready next text when you're next. Great Clips, it's going to be great. All salons are independently owned and operated. Contact your local salon for specific safety measures. 
Windstar Lines is a family-owned and operated local Dubuque charter bus company that has been serving customers nationwide since 1995. With eight Midwestern hubs and a varied fleet, including minibuses, motor coaches, sleeper buses, and vans, we are able to accommodate any group, large or small, to any destination near or far. With over 20 years in the travel and tourism industry, our reputation for superior safety, impeccable equipment, and unparalleled customer service makes us the right choice for your group's transportation needs. Now hiring full and part-time drivers. Go Windstar. Progressive Processing, a Hormel Foods company, is hiring great people across all shifts with new starting wages of $20.60 per hour to $25 per hour with the potential to earn up to $27 per hour. The team at Progressive Processing takes pride in producing popular and trusted Hormel Foods products that are sold in grocery stores across the country. They provide industry-leading benefits, a culture of engagement, and a variety of schedule options. See their openings and find your perfect job today at ProgressiveProcessingJobs.com. Um. Hey, Lowe's High for your Dubuque Fighting Saints as they make their return to the Imon Arena, formerly the Dubuque Ice Arena. The Imon Arena is home to your Dubuque Fighting Saints, and this season is going to be nothing short of epic as the Saints fight to keep their Cowbell Cup title and keep it out of the hands of Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, and Des Moines. The coveted Clark Cup is also in sight and the ultimate goal and trophy for the year. Don't miss any of the action this season and get your tickets now at DubuqueFightingSaints.com. Want to make it to multiple games this season? Check out the flex plan options that start as low as only $9 per game. Party zones are also available, and they make for a great place to host your next birthday, bachelor or bachelorette party, or corporate night out. Get more information as well as group ticket rates at DubuqueFightingSaints.com now. It's time to pack our house and halos high at the Imon Arena for your Dubuque Fighting Saints. Hey, it's me, the Crawford Guy. Is your water heater not working? Do you have a leaky pipe or faucet? Is there a drain that isn't draining? Crawford to the rescue. Crawford plumbers and drain cleaners are experts at providing real solutions for your real problems. For plumbing installation and repair, make the right call. Crawford Company. Heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and drain cleaning. Visit CrawfordNorth.com. At Great Clips, we want you to feel good about getting a great haircut. That's why we created the Great Care Promise, our commitment to keeping everyone as safe as possible in the salon. From contactless online check-in and social distancing to rigorous sanitization and mask requirements at all Great Clips locations, we're doing more to keep our salons clean and comfortable. Check in online and get a ready next text when you're next. Great Clips, it's going to be great. All salons are independently owned and operated. Contact your local salon for specific safety measures. At Great Clips, we want you to feel good about getting a great haircut. That's why we created the Great Care Promise, our commitment to keeping everyone as safe as possible in the salon. From contactless online check-in and social distancing to rigorous sanitization and mask requirements at all Great Clips locations, we're doing more to keep our salons clean and comfortable. Check in online and get a ready next text when you're next. Great Clips, it's going to be great. All salons are independently owned and operated. Contact your local salon for specific safety measures. Hey, I'm, I'm the Crawford, Crawford guy. guy. Ooh, do you guys always speak at the same time? Uh, sorry. I'll go first. You know, if you need help with your heating or air conditioning or plumbing, Crawford Company can solve your problem. But what about your problem? What, what problem? problem? Do you not hear yourselves? Take it from me, the Crawford lady. And, and me, me, the, the Crawford, Crawford guy. guy. Crawford is the comfort company. Visit CrawfordNorth.com. Halo's High for your Dubuque Fighting Saints. Catch all of the edge of your seat action on at the I'm On Arena. The Saints will be battling it out all season as they make a run for the coveted Clark Cup. Get tickets at DubuqueFightingSaints.com. Finning, 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 finning. You're winning with finning when you drive away in a finning car. a superstar you're winning with finning we take pride in customer loyalty we're leaders in the community so come on down and you will see finning, finning, finning. you're winning with finning finning after 20 minutes the fighting saints trailing one to nothing to the youngstown phantoms josh star joined 
as always in Dubuque by Jim Leitner. This broadcast on Eagle 102.3 tonight presented by Michelin in Piasta. The Fighting Saints, Jim, really kind of struggling to get a groove going offensively in these two games and continuing in the first period tonight. And I think that a lot of that has to do with Youngstown, their big defense core and their you know the way they attack the way they don't al allow teams to hunt pucks in the uh, attacking zone and so i think the fighting saints are gonna have to find a way to to get around that and, and create some offense and you know get back into this hockey game but uh, so far i think youngstown's done a nice job of taking them out of their game the saints are back out on the ice for period number two they had seven shots in the first on owen bartoskevich Really only one tested him much. It was Eric Paulson late in the period. And the Saints are looking to get more traffic and more pressure in the Youngstown end. Here in period number two. Saints led right to left in the second. Youngstown left to right. Saints in their camo green jerseys tonight. Black buckets and black pants. Youngstown in white and purple. Orange trim. In front of Owen Bartoskevich, so I left to right here in the second. Ready for puck drop in the second. Sandrial against Serrato. Puck is down. We're underway in period number two. Saints win the draw back to their own then. And start ahead right to left. Barron tips in. Sandrial will chase after it. Bartoskevich out of his net. Backhands up the wall. And Burchill will hold on his own end. He turns it over to Reeder near half wall. The shot blocked behind the net for Barron. Tries to play it back in front. Tipped away. And Burchill comes away with it. He's stopped again by Sandrial. The Saints pump it back down low. And then it's turned to center. 30 seconds in. Fisher Scott dumps in. And the Phantoms will go back for it. Second period. It's 1-0 Youngstown. Goal just 101 into the first by Sam Ranallo. The difference so far. Scott keeps in at the line briefly, but then it's played forward off a skate back in the Youngstown end and then cranked down the ice. They'll go in on goal, so Raylor has to play it to the side. Bison in back for it. Minute into the second, Saints down 1-0. Scott outlets on the tape. Pekarsik rumbles into the offensive zone. High slot, left side, the snap. Punched away by Bardiskevich. Paulson in the corner trying to cycle down low. He goes behind the net, catches up to a loose puck. Turns around in the corner, leaves it for Pekarsik. He'll swing it to the point. Dick across left side, St. Louis. Back to Pekarsik. He'll leave up top for Dick. His shot flutters wide of the net. Back to the near wing. Pekarsik all the way around behind. Tried to spin it back in the front. It was blocked. And then it will be Ronaldo playing the center. Saints grab there. 90 seconds in. Second period. First 90 seconds of this period. Much better for the Saints so far. Forcing turnovers. Pressuring on the four check. Creating a couple chances. They're back in the offensive end, but the pass down low intercepted. And it's Strathman moving to center. 145 in. Second period, 1-0. Phantoms. Shot turned wide by Raidler. A couple players fall in front of the net. Dubuque picks up the puck, and they turn it over on the half wall. It's Verona in top of the circle. It's quick shot up high. Loved by Raidler, and he just tosses it aside to the circle as the whistle blows. 158 in. Second period, 1-0 Phantoms. A good sustained pressure for the Fighting Saints in the, in the offensive zone. Probably one of their best of the game so far to start this uh, to start this second period. But really, you look at the whole weekend, they haven't had a ton of time where they've had sustained pressure in the offensive zone. Saints forecheck really causing the first issues almost for the whole weekend on that shift to start the period with Paulson, Cornforth, and Pekarsik getting it going. Reeder and Sandriel as well forcing some problems. Face off, Saints end to the right. Aaron will take it against Clark. He wins back behind the net. Jubinville starts the Saints ahead. Hard off the boards. Chopped into the offensive zone by Merrill. Two minutes into the second. Saints down one. Moving in on the fourth check. Patilla moves to center. Saints pick it up in the neutral zone. Rattle back in by Jubinville. Hard around the boards. Left wing. Noah Powell over skates. Aaron trying to crash it down low. It's stopped. Merrill lays a hit, the puck goes back in deep, but Wilson grabs for Youngstown. Two and a half in, second period, one nothing Phantoms. Left to right, it's Youngstown to center. Patilla into the Saints end, cross ice feed behind Veronin. Merrill picks it up, weaves to center, shoves it in on the backhand, goes all the way down, icing called. 
against the Saints. No question the Saints have had a better start to this period than they did the first period. And you just play like they're a little bit more connected than they were in that first period. And you know, hopefully that translates to a little more op opportunities op offensively. 2.41 into the uh, second. Saints down one nothing. They have had a, most of the zone time so far in the first 2.41. After an icing, a face off in the Saints end of the right. Near circle. Young for Youngstown. Will take against Aaron. The Saints win it. Jubinville racing forward. Left wing. He'll knife his way into the offensive zone. His pass to the left wing, intercepted, taken out to center by Smith. Right side across the Saints blue line. Wide to the circle, a shot on net, kicked away by Raidler, and it moves into the far corner wall, in behind the net, Seamus Powell finds. His outlet all the way to center, missed two teammates, but does find Merrill on the back wall. He'll dump it in and go off for a change. Andrew King in on the four check, working the puck free, has Romeo, far circle, looking in front, cross ice, it was in front of Frank. Off the end wall, back to the point, Scott. Lofts it down low and behind the net. Romeo, far corner, 320 in. Saints, four check, forcing some problems early in this period. Still down one nothing. Andrew King digging the puck off the corner wall. Feeds it below the goal line for Romeo. Back to King on the half wall. He'll chip it to the point. Has Scott wide open. Center point, shot wide of the net. Romeo, hard off the end wall. He missed the net with it. Off the glass, bounce to the point. Buys in a D to D. Scott, cross ice, right circle off Frank's stick. Trickles in behind the net. Romeo lays a hit. Frank goes down. Romeo able to find the puck in behind. Then lost control. And it is Osborne moving it out to center. Pass buys it in into the Saints end. Four minutes played in the second. Saints down one nothing. Much better so far for Dubuque in the second. They're back into the offensive zone. King across ice, left side, buys in it. Down the wall at the hash marks. Bottom of the circle, in behind the net. Romeo there, cycles out in front. King was there, tried to stuff it on, but he missed it. And it's moving to center. Botterill, right wing. Off to Serato, back to Botterill, cross ice feed, tipped out by Weisenden. King races onto it. Has Reeder on his right, into the offensive end. He finds Reeder, top of the circle. Moving into the offensive zone. Going down, Bartoskevich. He left it in front. Reeder backhands to the blue paint. It was loose, chopped out to center by Youngstown. 15 and a half left in the second. One nothing Phantoms. Saints move to center. It was tipped by Youngstown in. So no icing. Bartoskevich out toward the slot, the point rather. The Saints intercepted it. Reader shot off a body wide, and then the rebound try off a stick up out of play. 450 into the second. one nothing Phantoms, but the Saints gym really starting to press and cause some issues for Youngstown early in this period. You know, this is a lot more the uh, the type of fighting Saints team we've been used to seeing in the, the first part of the season. And, you know, they're, they are hunting pucks. They're not as timid, it doesn't seem like, and they're, you know, they're really forcing the issue a little bit more on Youngstown. And, you know, that's, uh, you keep doing that, eventually they're going to be rewarded as we've seen throughout the early portion of this season. Sondrell is going to take the offensive zone face off. Youngstown end of the left, near circle. They go against Svoboda, won by Youngstown. Pittner in behind his own net. Gunty outlet, intercepted Sandro. High slot across right side. It goes through Barron. He grabs it back off the end boards and twirls it in behind for Reeder. Far corner. He has Pittner right on his back. Reeder pins it against the boards. Sandriel coming to try and dig it free. Reeder kicking it along behind the net. It pops free to the wall. And it's Ronaldo there, scooping out to center. All the way down the ice. Icing called as Malbuff goes back to touch up. 5-16 into the second. 1-0 Youngstown. And Reeder causing some uh, problems there or just holding the puck up and ended up in icing for Youngstown. Saints will send out Paulson, Cornforth, and Pekarsik. This line has been really good tonight, creating a couple chances, the few that the Saints have had in the first came from this line. Cornforth will take the draw. Right circle, offensive end. Far wing, will go against Foboda again. It's one forward by Cornforth to the corner wall. Paulson tips it toward the point. Dick has it there, his shot back down low, tipped out of play. 5.25 into the second, one nothing Phantom. Saints, another Ozone face off. It looks like they're gonna talk about it, the line thing. 
Another thing Youngstown really does well is they get into those passing lanes and in those shooting lanes and really disrupt anything that you can go. And, and they just do such a nice job of closing, closing gaps and taking away those passes and those shots. And that makes it tough for you to get anything going. They're going to keep the face off in the Youngstown end. Saints offense has proven tough to stop. They still scored four goals last night. It may feel like they didn't, it but did, yeah. they did score four, and they have an offensive zone face off. Being shut out so far tonight early in the second. They can't win it. It's chipped out to center into the Saints end. High slots, Svoboda, the shot off the post. It bounces to the near wall in the corner. Ronaldo trying to spin it back in front off the Saints skate and turn to the point. Turn back down the wall, and Paulson will be able to outlet for debut. Corn fourth in toward Pekarsik, offensive end. He's sealed off. Puck goes into the corner. Sealed into the back wall by Strathman. Turned up the boards, and Ronaldo will kick it backwards. Saints pick it off. Pekarsik has Corn fourth alone in front. He scores! Well, there is the Saints fourth check, and it converts Gavin Corn fourth. On the board, six minutes into the second. It's a 1-1 game, Corn Force, ninth of the season. You're exactly right, the Fighting Saints did have the four check going, forced Youngstown into a turnover, ends up in the back of the net, basically a two on O, taking advantage of Youngstown's mistake and you know, that's what we expect to see from the Fighting Saints. That's what they've done to, to get to, to get where they are right now. And, you know, I think that's what was absent a little bit last night, and it's been absent so far through the first period and almost a half here. And, you know, they got it back going, and it ends up in the back of their net. So it's a good positive reinforcement for the Fighting Saints going forward here. They win the draw, move right back in offensive end. Far wall, Barron will try to chip it down low. It's blocked, but to the point, Jubinville fires. It's tipped over the net. Reeder was in front. It goes back to the point. Powell wafts it in, and Bartoskevich gloves it. Holds on, 13-43 left in the first. Gavin Cornforth's ninth of the season has tied it up. We'll be right back. Finning, 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 finning. You're winning with finning when you drive away in a finning car. a superstar you're winning with finning we take pride in customer loyalty we're leaders in the community so come on down and you will see finning, finning, finning. you're winning with finning finning gavin cornforth ending a four game goal drought has the saints level with the youngstown phantoms battle of the top two teams in the eastern conference they're tied after last night's shootout win for Youngstown and it's just about the halfway mark in regulation Jim good good game so far the Saints have really kind of stepped up so far in this middle period it certainly turned into a much better game here the first six minutes and change of the second period because the Fighting Saints have been playing with that, that tenacity that we've been used to seeing and you know they got her all tied up and I, I think we're in for a good one the rest of this way Jay Reeder will take the face off offensive end to the left, 13.43 left in the second. Saints, five shots so far in this period, only at seven in the first, already five more. They win the draw, Sandriel shot off the end glass, tipped back to the front, Reader was dumped, it will be a penalty, and Youngstown touches up, and a hook called the Saints after just tying it up, headed to the Chick-fil-A power play for the third time tonight. St. Louis and Pekarsik get the assist on corn fourth. Ninth, Wilson sitting for a hook and the Saints to the Chick-fil-A power play for the third time. Over two so far, 13.37 left in the second. And the Fighting Saints have had a little bit more sense of urgency. Hopefully that carries over to this power play. You know, the first couple of opportunities on the power play didn't seem like they had that, so. We'll see if that uh, translates here. Well, they can't win the draw. It's cleared all the way down to start off the power play. 13 and a half to go in the second. Buys in and goes all the way back to his own end. He's spilled behind the net. Plays it to Reeder with his glove. 
and will start ahead. Right to left, Sandriel rumbles ahead. Right wing into the offensive zone. St. Louis tips it in back. Reader picks up behind the net, chips up the wall. Pekarsik on the near dasher, left wing. Slides to the point, has Bison in there. Back left side, Pekarsik through the seam, right circle. St. Louis touches back to the point. Bison in, St. Louis across ice. Plays catch with Pekarsik, the pass back to St. Louis, tipped off the wall. Back to the point, Bison in. Down the right wing boards. St. Louis holds up there into the corner. For Reeder, with 1.15 on the power play. 12.50 left in the second, tied at one. Bison in, D to D left side, Pekarsik winds. He plays the Reeder, his backhand across the slot, tipped away before St. Louis could get to it. Saints have it back right wing, halfway through the power play. 12.35 in the second, 1-1 one, one the score. Pekarsik, left circle, top of the ring, fires through, turn on net, save, rebound, try. They stuff at it, it's stopped by Bartoskevich. And played to the point, Bison in. Back down the wall, left side for Reeder, 45 on the power play. Reeder cycles up to the top, all the way around, right wing, behind the net. Surveys out in front, stuffed wide by Sandro. Back to Reeder, the shot, save, rebound, turned to the side, bouncing around the blue paint. Bartoskevich got his elbow to it as it was on the ice, pushed it to the wing. Bison in at the point, right side, St. Louis shattered his stick on the one-timer. Reeder was dumped in front, a delayed call coming against Youngstown, 20 left on the power play. Pekarsik down low and a whistle. The Saints had the puck. The delayed call was going against Youngstown. They blew the whistle. Well, I think there's they, a little bit of... Are they calling a penalty shot? Are they just bringing the face off to center? I think they're bringing the face off to center. It's Machu going to the box for two. A cross check, the call. And I'm not sure why they would bring the face off to center ice. I think it was, I think there was a little bit of the unintentional goaltender interference or something in the crease. I think that's probably why they brought it out. I think that's why the whistle blew, even though the Fighting Saints had the puck. Kerr McDonald has the squad huddled up in front of the bench right now, trying to get some instruction before the power play, second leg of this power play begins. It's gonna be five on three, but just for 17 seconds as Machu sits for a cross check. 11.53 left in the second, it's 1-1. Saints have tied the game in this second period, a much better period than the first, and they've even the score after giving one up 101 into the game. Faceoff will be at center ice. Eric Paulson's going to take it. Patilla for Youngstown. It's a two-man advantage for the Saints for 17 seconds. Approaching the midway point in regulation. Second game of the weekend. Teams tied atop the Eastern Conference. Faceoff won by Youngstown. And they will clear all the way down. Raidler out of the net, leads to the side. Just 10 on the two-man advantage. Saints with 150 overall on the power play. Seamus Powell blazes through the neutral zone. As Cornforth right wing, he's the goal scorer for the Saints. Turns back to the point. Right side, Paulson out of the box is Wilson. Five on four for the Saints. Left side, Dick, one-timer. Went off the side of the net. Back up the right wing for Powell. 11 and a half in the second. Saints, 130 on the power play. Paulson steps up, left circle, shot blocked. Back to the point for Powell. He'll survey from the center of the blue line. Working his way to the left wing, feeds back to the right. Kalen Dick on the far wall. Top of the zone, Eric Paulson. The league's leading point scorer with 22 to the point. Powell, right side, Paulson, he bobbled the pass, and then it's cleared by Wilson all the way down. 105 on the power play, 11 left in the second. Saints, much better second period so far than the first. They've even the score, back into the zone on the power play, Paulson in front, and the pass was knocked all the way down the ice. Radler out of the net, flubs it behind the cage. Young forces the turnover and holds on in the Saints end. He's then swarmed and Dubuque will come away with the puck behind its own net. Paulson up the right wing. 40 to go on the power play. Saints to center ice, right wing, into the zone corn fork. Holds up top of the circuit. 10 and a half remaining in the second. It's tipped to center and corn fork will go back to play for Powell. He turns into traffic in the neutral zone. Youngstown pushes to the Saints end, just 25 on the power play. Back to Reeder, into the offensive zone. Left wing on his backhand, cuts to the front of the net, all the way through, never got the shot away. Far corner, he'll play to the point. Paulson 
15 on the power play, 10.05 in the second, tied at one. Center point buys in it. Right side for Paulson, top of the circle. He'll backtrack to the boards and play back up top by Zinn. D to D. Pekarsik looks in front as Reeder stuffs it to the back door. It bounced away. Out of the box is Machu. Power play ends. Saints still holding on. Paulson cross sites. Pekarsik top of the circle. Curls drags the shot blocked by Osborne. And he will move it to center ice. Chip it down and the Saints pick it up in their own end. So they can't score on the power play. Had basically two straight. Unable to convert, now 0 for 4 in the game. Saints tied at 1, though, with Youngstown. Nine and a half to go in the second. Phantoms pick up the puck at their own blue line to the left and will start forward with Osborne. Across the red line, knuckles it in deep to the near corner. Saints end to the right. Gunty in the corner, takes it off the wall, sealed off by a Saint, and it is Bisonin moving up to center. Right wing into the offensive zone. Puck hops on him, he plays it in deep. Reader goes to work on the four check. Seals it behind the net, pinned against the boards. Puck pops to the wall, chipped ahead. Sandrial kicks it down. Pekarsik dangles into traffic and lost it. It's a two-on-one for Youngstown. Ronaldo has Gunty on his right, tries to feed him. It's in the air, gloved by Raidler. The pass was in the air. Gunty was on the back door looking for it, trying to swing at it like a baseball bat, but Raidler caught it before he got there. 8.49 left in the second. We will step aside here in Dubuque. 1-1 one, one to score past the halfway mark in regulation. Finning, 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 finning. You're winning with finning. When you drive away in a finning car, you're winning with finning. And you're always treated like a superstar. You're winning with finning. We take pride in customer loyalty. We're leaders in the community. So come on. Fighting Saints and Phantoms tied at 1, 8.49 to go in the second period. The Saints so far out shooting Youngstown 9 to 3 in the second. There you have the tying goal, Gavin Kornforth's ninth, ending a four game drought. Uri Pekarsik, his 13th assist, that leads the team. And Lucas St. Louis, his eighth assist after he had a pair of assists last night. The Saints have turned it on in the second. I think that's the best the power play has looked all weekend. They didn't score, but they looked connected. They, they had a lot of zone time. I thought it was the best they looked. Face off, Dubuque end to the right. 8.49 left in the second. 1-1, one, one. Charlie Aaron will take against Charlie Serrato for Youngstown. And they drop the puck, but they whistle blows, and they are going to drop one more time here in the Saints end. Near circle to the right. Raylor watches on to his left. And the puck is down, one by Youngstown. Top of the circle, Burchill shot blocked. Malbuff takes it to center. His outlet looking for Powell, who's streaking in, blocked, and then fluttered back in Saints end to the right. Off the end wall, out in front, and Raylor will just cover it up with the glove. 8.38 to play in the second. 1-1, one, one. the score, Gavin Cornforce goal, meaning a donation from Dubuque Screw Products to Youth Hockey in Dubuque. Far circle, Saints end of the right. Serato for Youngstown, Aaron for the Saints. It's chopped ahead by Dubuque, it bounces to center ice, and Pittner will settle there for Strathman. This pair back together tonight. Strathman, the captain for Youngstown, missed the game last night, serving a suspension. Puck off a stick, up and out of play behind the Dubuque net, and a whistle comes. 8.24 to go in this second period. 1-1 one, one the score. A lot of people think Strathman's one of the best defensemen in the USHL. He's a North Dakota commit and a draft pick of the Columbus Blue Jackets and he was a big reason why they they won a Clark Cup last year and he decided to need a little more seasoning and came back to the USHL for one more year before he goes and joins the uh, Fighting Hawks. He had 35 assists last year as a defenseman in 56 games. Puck on the near wall in the Dubuque end. It's flipped ahead and the Butte will chop the center with Malba. Frank twirls it forward looking for Jubinville, streaking in. Jubinville, a future teammate, 
of Strathman at North Dakota. But he can't hold on. It's Botterill into the Saints end. Right side, the shot flipped. It was going wide. Raylor caught it, then was crashed into by Serrato. And the whistle comes. 7.57 to play. Period number two, 1-1 the score. It was Sam Ranallo, 101 into the game tonight. Second straight night he scored in just about the first minute of the game. Saints answered tonight with Gavin Cornforth in the second period. And our even 1-1, just past the halfway mark. These two teams tied atop the Eastern Conference, 23 points apiece in their second meeting of the weekend, second meeting out of four this season. Sandriel in his own end, the captain for Dubuque to take the draw against Clark for Youngstown. Based off one by Youngstown, turn back to the circle, Saints pick it off, Sandriel spins it ahead, but can't move it past a Phantom in the neutral zone. Puck turned in front of the Phantom's bench, St. Louis will pick it up, left wing, moving into the offensive zone, bobbles but regains, left side, cross ice, top of the circle, Barron the shot, it was blocked up and out behind the net and the whistle gone 7.36 left in the second. Good chance off the rush there for the Saints, tied at one. Yeah, they've created a lot more opportunities. You know, it's, it's interesting. I think they've looked better offensively here the second period of, than they have all weekend. And, you know, they just have the one goal to show for it. But they are forcing the issue and they are creating uh, opportunities. They just keep, keep playing that way. Eventually, they're going to find the back of the net. Well, the four goals the Saints scored last night against the norm for Youngstown. They allow just 2.6 goals a game coming into the weekend. Saints have scored four in all but one game this season. They can't win the offensive zone draw all the way deep. Saints end. The centering feed from Veronin was blocked, and Dubuque will move ahead right to left. Reader speeds up the left wing. Sneaks by down low and stopped by Machu as he got to the circles. He cranks it off the glass, bouncing to the Saints end. Dick across for St. Louis. His outlet to center intercepted. Clark rattles it back in. Saints end to the right. In behind the net, Kalen Dick, first there, up the wall, St. Louis, feeds Barron. He bobbles and lost it. Clark ahead to Verone in left circle, bottom of the ring, the shot over the net, off the end glass. Machu at the point, his shot blocked by Dick. He kicks it to himself and starts ahead. Rushing right to left, Puck hops on him, and he cannot even dump it in. It's Youngstown back ahead. Chipped into the Saints end, Smith chases with Bisonin. Bisonin pins it against the wall, far corner Saints end. Barron comes away with it. He's knocked to the ice. Puck up the wall. Bar uh, Sandriel, rather, will be able to chip it ahead. Reader corrals, moving into the offensive zone. Dangles in, and then, before he could get the shot away, it was poked to the corner wall. 6.25 to play in the second. Even at one. Second and two this weekend. Saints work the puck free in the corner. Paulson to the point. Scott, left side. The shot blocked into the corner. Reader stuck out there at the end of a long shift. He'll head off the ice. Pekarsik will hop over for him. Scott feeds high slot. Paulson turns to the right circle. McLaughlin stung with a limp. Still staying on the ice in front of the net. The shot in from the point, deflected, and it bounces right to Bartoskevich. And McLaughlin will limp off the ice to the Youngstown bench. 5.59 to play in the second. A 1-1 game. For a minute there, it looked like he lost a skate blade because he wasn't putting any kind of pressure on that right leg and right skate. And I don't know if he got uh, just twisted a little bit underneath when, the, when someone fell on him, but it looks like one of those ankle sprains that's real, real painful when it happens. He's staying on the bench, so don't imagine he'll miss too much time. The Saints offensive zone can't Win the draw, it's spilled the center. Deep into the Dubuque end. Bison and cuts in front of his own net. Then it goes in behind. Scott had fallen down. The Saints back into center, but can't hold on there. 540 left, Youngstown picks up at its own blue line to the left. Starting forward, it's Strathman left to right. Weaves through into the Saints end, high slot. Let's the shot go, he missed it wide. Into the corner. Cornforth chips it up the wall, it's blocked. Scott, a second try, feeds off Cornforth's skate. Into the far wall, he'll find, and then fly across ice for Pekarsik. He taps it into the offensive zone, but can't get in deep. Ronaldo back to the Fighting Saints line. Gunty will track down the right wing wall. 
Spin it in behind, up to the far point. Strathman on the left side, 5.08 to play in the second. Tied at one. Feeds right circle, Serato at the hash marks. Back to the point, Osborne curls and drags. Cornforth blocked it. It bounces to the front of that. Rebound, stuffed on, and Raylor makes the stop. He didn't see it all the way. He felt it, hit him in the glove, bounced down in front, and he was able to cover up. 4.58 left in the second. Raylor with a big stop to keep this game tied at one. I think that's been as good of offensive pressure as the Phantoms have had in the second period, uh, which is a testament to the way the Fighting Saints have played and really not allowed Youngstown to get anything going in the, the attacking zone. Raylor with 11 saves tonight. Bartoskevich, 16. He only had to face 19 shots all of last night's game. Shot off the end glass, bouncing back in front off the faceoff, turned to the slot, and then back behind the Saints net to the right. DeHaro at the point, pass off the mark to the far wall, but Bottero picks up for Youngstown. His drop pass goes out to center, and Osborne goes back for it. 4.40 to play, second period, tied at one. Youngstown scored early in the first. The Saints evened it in the second. Ronaldo for Youngstown, Cornforth for Dubuque. Osborne weaves back in, Dubuque end to the right, far wall. He's shoved into the boards by Juvenville. Puck goes in behind, Burchill cycles back to the point for Osborne. Left wing, he'll flip it on. It's saved by Raylor, goes in behind the net. Burchill there for Youngstown. Tries to tip it in behind the net. Aaron seals it off. Juvenville hard along the wall and they dig away in the corner. Puck stuck in a pair of skates. In behind the Dubuque net, Kevin Raylor watches on to his right as it moves to the corner wall. Aaron still has the puck stuck in his skates. Botteril and Aaron battle. Jubinville comes free, it's won by Youngstown. Shot from Burchill at the circle, and Raylor seals it and covers. 3.51 to play in the second. Tied at one here in Dubuque. Raylor a couple big stops in the last few shifts for the Saints. He has 13 saves now tonight. Yeah, last couple minutes here, Youngstown's made a nice little push against the Fighting Saints, and you know, but before that, pretty much the, most of the period, the Saints have had the jump, so uh, it's a good uh, good pushback by the Phantoms, and like I said, I think this is gonna be a really entertaining last 23 minutes and 51 seconds of this one. Saints zone, face off on the far circle. King against Young. It's won by the Saints. Frank starts ahead. Right wing, cross ice to Romeo. He bobbles into the offensive zone. Turns back to center, then dumps in. Bartoskevich will leave behind for Wilson, and the Phantoms will start forward. 3.35 left. Period number two. Tied at one. Touch to center. Malba chops it across, buys it in backhands to the neutral zone. Romeo grabs it into the offensive zone. Right wing, Frank tried to sift it back in front for Romeo. It was blocked by Wilson, who takes over at the circles and then flies all the way down the ice. Tipped into the Saints end. 3.15 to play in the second. Tied at one. Weisenden weaves into some traffic, but moves the puck to center. King right wing. Frank back, grabs the pass that was behind him and then rips the shot over the bar. Back to the point. Saints keep in. in shot blocked by Smith. Goes to center. Dubuque will dump back in and then change lines. Wilson coming away with it. We're starting four left to right for the Phantoms. Young into the zone, far wall. Trying to cut in against Malbo. He was sealed off. They both crash into the net. It comes off, and the whistle blows. Somehow they all avoided Kevin Raylor, but the net still knocked off. 2.43 to play in the second. A 1-1 game. The officials are going to meet to decide where this faceoff will be. It looked like Young just ran into the, the side of the net and knocked the whole net off its moorings. They will keep the face off in the Dubuque zone. Near circle to the right. Clark will take the draw for Youngstown. Well, now he'll switch places with Patilla. Sandrial for the Saints. In his own end. With 2.43 left in the second, tied at one. 
Saints had seven shots in the first, 10 so far in the second, it's tied at one. Youngstown wins the draw, Strathman works his way to the far boards. At the point left side, Barron seals it, but the pass still makes its way across. Pittner right side, shot tipped in front, Raylor slides to his right and makes the save on Veronin, who redirected it, and Raylor saw it the whole way, making a huge stop for the Saints, 2.30 left in the second, a 1-1 game. That's a great look by Pittner. He just basically put it on net and looking for a tip, and you know, fortunately, Raidler saw, was able to track the puck and make the save and, and get a face off for the Fighting Saints. Face off to Buke, end of the right. It's won by Youngstown. Puck flipped in front, blocked, and the Saints move ahead. Sandriol right to left. Far wall, he'll weave into the zone. Flips it in deep on the back end. Barron crashing in behind. Puck up the boards. Dick will settle and then chop it back down low. Barron toward Reeder in the corner. Tried to play it in front. It went off a Youngstown skate into the blue paint. And Bartoskevich covers up. 2-10 to play. Second period. A 1-1 game. The Saints working an offensive zone draw out of that rush. Up the ice. Bartoskevich kind of recognize that things were going a little bit off the rails and put his mid on top of it to get the whistle and calm things down a little bit in the Youngstown zone. Yeah, I've been Cornforth out with Eric Paulson and Uri Pekarsik. Cornforth and Paulson loving having their line mate back tonight. And they win the draw. St. Louis, far wall, right wing. Banks back toward the point and Cornforth had started working toward the middle. So he has to turn back to center all the way back to his own end. He goes back for it. Saints up the wall, Pekarsik weaves out to center and the outlet, St. Louis tips to Cornforth, right wing. He'll drop back, it goes tipped away from St. Louis. Saints grab it back at center, 145 left. 1-1 the score in the second period. It's stopped in the neutral zone, pumped back into the Dubuque end to the right. St. Louis hard up through the middle and has Paulson right on the tape, committed. Just recently, the University of Minnesota moves into the offensive zone. Left side, and he stopped as he got to the half wall. Veronin starts ahead, left to right. Into the offensive end for Youngstown, but Gunty beat him into the zone offside. And the whistle comes with 1.22 to go in the second. I was kind of expecting to see a little bit more uh nose-to-nose -nose combat tonight. A little bit more of an edge after last night. It seemed like things were getting a little bit testy towards the end of that one. And we really haven't seen any dust-ups or anything really nasty after the whistle, which, you know, in a one-to-one -one hockey game, you might expect it to be a little bit more uh, contentious, but just haven't seen it yet so far. It's been a tight game, but not a ton of extra stuff after the whistle. Neutral zone face off. One by Youngstown pumped in toward the net. In behind the Saints cage. It's Scott in his skates. Has Weizen in. He starts up the wall for Merrill. His chip forward block and stays in the zone. But he's able to muscle it out to center on the second try. 103 left in the second. It's tied at one. one Osborne holds on period. inside his own blue line. And the Phantoms move ahead left to right. Tipped in deep Saints end. Scott leaves to the corner, Vizenin up the wall for the Saints, but it's kept in by DeHaro, he'll swing it back down the boards. Twirl to the point, left side Osborne, and it was blocked by the Saints, a penalty being called against Dubuque. Serato ended up without a stick on the play, and Scott is headed to the box. It will be a slashing penalty against Fisher Scott and the Saints. Head to the Crawford North penalty kill with 43.1 to go in the second period, tied at one. This will be a big kill for the Fighting Saints. Uh, you know, as we mentioned last night, Youngstown really kind of turned the game last night with a five on three power play early in the third period. So uh, one run hockey game that you really want to kill this off, get the first 43 seconds out of the way and then kill the rest of it to begin the third. Reeder's gonna take the face off in his own end to start the penalty kill against Braden Clark. Big penalty kill for the Saints. The face off won by Youngstown. Burchill right side, the shot, it went off the outside of the net. 
Back to the far wall. Serrano playing to the point, blocked by Reeder. He spins to the circles. Foboda touches back to the top. Strathman, left side, Serrano. The shot blocked. It goes wide in behind the net. 25 seconds in the period. Near wall, Burchill turned it over to Bison, and then he was stripped. Svoboda to the corner, working low to high. Has Strathman on the right point. Down the wall, Burchill plays back to the left wing, Serrano. Strathman center point, swings to the left side. Bottom of the circle, shot up high on Raylor that pops the mask, and the immediate whistle there. Raylor felt the strap pop, and he immediately started shaking it off. 7.7 .7 left in the second period, 1-1 one, one the score, 125 left on a Youngstown power play. Strathman has such poise with the puck. I mean, Fighting Saints penalty killers were trying to put pressure on him and, you know, force the issue, but he's just he's so calm out there on the blue line and, you know, he gains control and then makes a play. And you know, that's kind of steady defenseman you want to see on your power play. Raylor doing some work on his mask on the top of his goal. He is placing it back on his head. 7.7 .7 left. Saints on a Crawford North penalty kill. Tied at one, second period. Goal early for Youngstown, a goal in the second period for the Saints, even at one. Second of two, teams tied, 23 points apiece atop the Eastern Conference. Game number 16 for both of them. Face off, Saints end late in the second. Power play for Youngstown. It's won by Youngstown. Strathman, top of the left circle, a shot. Blocked by Reeder, who slid out to make the stop. The puck turned back in front. It hit Clark, who is prone in the slot. And that will end the period. Jay Reeder lost the draw immediately. Charged ahead to get a shot block in. And the Saints leadership stepping up there with Reeder. And the Saints head to the third, tied at one with Youngstown. There'll be a minute 17 on a penalty kill for Dubuque when the third period begins. And Jim, we talked about the lack of extracurriculars while well, getting some jawing back and forth at the end of this period. Yeah, Charlie Serrato in the, uh, at the center of it for the Phantoms, which shouldn't come as a big surprise. He's a guy who likes to, likes to mix it up and create a little bit of havoc. And, no, I think that's what you're gonna, we're gonna get the last 20 minutes of this hockey game. You're gonna see some John back and forth and you're gonna see some, uh, some play after the whistle. You know, that's a big two points on the line. And, you know, the winner of tonight's game gets uh, sole possession of first place in the Eastern Conference. So even though it's early in the season, there's quite a bit at stake for, for both of these teams. Teams, 23 points apiece, top of the East. 1-1 the score after 40. We'll have the third coming up next on the Saints Broadcast Network.
Josh Starr joined by Saints, the Saints' newest forward, Nick Romeo, as uh, the Saints take on the Youngstown Phantoms. And uh, Nick, first of all, uh, you know, last week your first USHL action. What was it like to get out there? Yeah, it was great. Um, I thought the speed was a little quicker, and uh, everyone here is uh, obviously at the top of the league for a reason. I uh, thought the play here is very good, and everyone is uh, great and uh, excited to get, keep going. Coming in from uh, the main Nordiques in the North American League, what did you uh, what did you learn there this earlier in the season and uh, to start the year that you can bring up here? Yeah, I mean, uh, coming from Maine, uh, it was a great organization. Uh, every day was a battle there, and uh, nothing nothing too too much here too as well. And everyone every day is a battle here, and uh, I keep going here and excited to move forward. The guy's been uh, helpful transitioning in into the locker room. How's it been? Yeah, the boys are great. I'm um, just getting getting to know a bunch of the guys here on my second week, but i um, excited and just want to keep going. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it.
Windstar Lines is a family-owned and operated local Dubuque charter bus company that has been serving customers nationwide since 1995. With eight Midwestern hubs and a varied fleet, including minibuses, motor coaches, sleeper buses, and vans, we are able to accommodate any group, large or small, to any destination near or far. With over 20 years in the travel and tourism industry, our reputation for superior safety, impeccable equipment, and unparalleled customer service makes us the right choice for your group's transportation needs. Now hiring full and part-time drivers. Go Windstar. Progressive Processing, a Hormel Foods company, is hiring great people across all shifts with new starting wages of $20.60 per hour to $25 per hour with the potential to earn up to $27 per hour. The team at Progressive Processing takes pride in producing popular and trusted Hormel Foods products that are sold in grocery stores across the country. They provide industry-leading benefits, a culture of engagement, and a variety of schedule options. See their openings and find your perfect job today at ProgressiveProcessingJobs.com. Hey, Lowe's High for your Dubuque Fighting Saints as they make their return to the Imon Arena, formerly the Dubuque Ice Arena. The Imon Arena is home to your Dubuque Fighting Saints, and this season is going to be nothing short of epic as the Saints fight to keep their Cowbell Cup title and keep it out of the hands of Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, and Des Moines. The coveted Clark Cup is also in sight and the ultimate goal and trophy for the year. Don't miss any of the action this season and get your tickets now at DubuqueFightingSaints.com. Want to make it to multiple games this season? Check out the flex plan options that start as low as only $9 per game. Party zones are also available, and they make for a great place to host your next birthday, bachelor or bachelorette party, or corporate night out. Get more information as well as group ticket rates at DubuqueFightingSaints.com now. It's time to pack our house and halos high at the Imon Arena for your Dubuque Fighting Saints. Hey, it's me, the Crawford Guy. Is your water heater not working? Do you have a leaky pipe or faucet? Is there a drain that isn't draining? Crawford to the rescue. Crawford's plumbers and drain cleaners are experts at providing real solutions for your real problems. For plumbing installation and repair, make the right call. Crawford Company. Heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and drain cleaning. Visit CrawfordNorth.com. At Great Clips, we want you to feel good about getting a great haircut. That's why we created the Great Care Promise, our commitment to keeping everyone as safe as possible in the salon. From contactless online check-in and social distancing to rigorous sanitization and mask requirements at all Great Clips locations, we're doing more to keep our salons clean and comfortable. Check in online and get a ready next text when you're next. Great Clips, it's going to be great. All salons are independently owned and operated. Contact your local salon for specific safety measures. Windstar Lines is a family-owned and operated local Dubuque charter bus company that has been serving customers nationwide since 1995. With eight Midwestern hubs and a varied fleet, including minibuses, motor coaches, sleeper buses, and vans, we are able to accommodate any group, large or small, to any destination near or far. With over 20 years in the travel and tourism industry, our reputation for superior safety, impeccable equipment, and unparalleled customer service makes us the right choice for your group's transportation needs. Now hiring full and part-time drivers. Go Windstar. Progressive Processing, a Hormel Foods company, is hiring great people across all shifts with new starting wages of $20.60 per hour to $25 per hour with the potential to earn up to $27 per hour. The team at Progressive Processing takes pride in producing popular and trusted Hormel Foods products that are sold in grocery stores across the country. They provide industry-leading benefits, a culture of engagement, and a variety of schedule options. See their openings and find your perfect job today at ProgressiveProcessingJobs.com. Hey, Lowe's High for your Dubuque Fighting Saints as they make their return to the Imon Arena, formerly the Dubuque Ice Arena. The Imon Arena is home to your Dubuque Fighting Saints, and this season is going to be nothing short of epic as the Saints fight to keep their Cowbell Cup title and keep it out of the hands of Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, and Des Moines. The coveted Clark Cup is also in sight and the ultimate goal and trophy for the year. Don't miss any of the action this season and get your tickets now at DubuqueFightingSaints.com. 
Want to make it to multiple games this season? Check out the Flex Plan options that start as low as only $9 per game. Party Zones are also available, and they make for a great place to host your next birthday, bachelor or bachelorette party, or corporate night out. Get more information as well as group ticket rates at DubuqueFightingSaints.com now. It's time to pack our house and halos high at the Imon Arena for your Dubuque Fighting Saints. Hey, it's me, the Crawford Guy. Is your water heater not working? Do you have a leaky pipe or faucet? Is there a drain that isn't draining? Crawford to the rescue. Crawford plumbers and drain cleaners are experts at providing real solutions for your real problems. For plumbing installation and repair, make the right call. Crawford Company. Heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and drain cleaning. Visit CrawfordNorth.com. At Great Clips, we want you to feel good about getting a great haircut. That's why we created the Great Care Promise, our commitment to keeping everyone as safe as possible in the salon. From contactless online check-in and social distancing to rigorous sanitization and mask requirements at all Great Clips locations, we're doing more to keep our salons clean and comfortable. Check in online and get a ready next text when you're next. Great Clips, it's going to be great. All salons are independently owned and operated. Contact your local salon for specific safety measures. We are ready for period number three in Dubuque. Tonight's broadcast on Eagle 102.3, presented by Michelin in Piasta. The Fighting Saints and the Phantoms square at one apiece to start the third period. Youngstown with 117 left on a power play to begin this final frame. Just like last night, the Saints gave up a goal very early, 101 in tonight. They found the equalizer with Gavin Cornforth in the second period. Unable to score on four power plays tonight for the Saints. Jim, a huge 117 to start this third period. No question about it. You know, that last night, Youngstown scored a big power play goal early in the third period. A five on three power play goal to get, get the game tied. And then they ended up taking the lead just a few minutes later. So a, a big penalty kill by the Fighting Saints here. So far, I think their penalty kill has looked pretty decent. You know, they've done a nice job of limiting opportunities and limiting looks for the Phantoms, so that's going to have to continue here. But you don't want to get too aggressive. You don't want to take that second power er, penalty and give them a five on three like last night. The Saints have Fisher Scott sitting in the box, a late second period penalty. 117 left on it. Like you said, it was Mikey Burchill early in the second, er, early in the third period on a two man advantage last night for Youngstown. The Saints trying to prevent that same story tonight. Virgil and Pittner early in the third last night. Turn the game around. Third period ready to go. Reader and Clark. Puck is down. Underway in the third. 1.15 to go on a Youngstown power play. They move ahead right to left. Virgil speeds into the Saints end. Far side, Juvenville picks it up in the corner, can't clear. Second try off the glass, takes a hop off a stanchion. Sandriel kicks it ahead. He has Reeder with him on the right. They move into the offensive zone. The flip pass in front. Reeder chops it on on the backhand. Saved by Bartoskevich. The pass initially didn't reach Reeder, but it bounced back to him. He got a shot on the backhand. Bartoskevich made the save 24 seconds in to the third. Tied at one, 54 left on the Crawford North penalty kill. Reader's such a cerebral player. You know, he didn't uh, he didn't give up on the play, and looks like he drew a penalty on it as well. So that's a huge turn of events for the Fighting Saints. They do call a penalty on Serato, holding up Reader from getting that initial shot away. So it's four on four for 54 seconds. 24 seconds gone by in the third, tied at one. The top two teams in the Eastern Conference, they're tied with 23 points each. Second meeting of the weekend. Last night, a 5-4 shootout win 
for Youngstown. Tight games both nights. Youngstown holds on its own zone. They turn it over. Paulson in the slot. Leads to the right wing. Cornforth. He'll turn around on the half wall. Spinning the traffic. And then dump it in deep. Taken by Strathman there. He left it to the corner. Paulson and Strathman tied up. Paulson couldn't get his stick free. And it's turned into the back by Youngstown. They'll start the center. 52 seconds into the third. 24 left on a four on four. Youngstown started the period on the power play. The Saints generated a chance. Serato took a penalty. And Dubuque with 13 seconds left on this four on four. They turn it over in center. It's Patilla racing ahead. Jubinville seals him to the circle. He shoots. It rips over the bar off the glass and out to center. 115 into the third. Tied at one. Fisher Scott out of the box. It goes down as a successful Crawford North penalty kill. The Saints have one minute of a Chick-fil-A power play now to try and take the lead for the first time tonight. They move into the offensive zone. Pekarsik steps up, he rings it off the post. It bounces back to the far wing. Reader cycles up top, all the way around, near wing. Behind the Youngstown cage to the right. He'll loop into the corner, feed to the point. As Pekarsik left side, 35 on the power play. Just about two minutes into the third. The shot from Bison in, bounces out in front, stuffed on. Reader out in front, Savio Sigurid, he scores! Reader found Savio, he went through the slot. St. Louis all alone on the right circle. He hammered it home. It's a 2-1, St. Louis 1.55 into the third. And the Chick-fil-A power play strikes for the Saints. What a beautiful pass by Sondriel. I don't think he even was, he wasn't looking at the play, but he just knew that he had, he had St. Louis on the back door for a tap in, wide open net. You know, those are the kind of goals you're gonna have to score against Bartoskevich because he's such a big goaltender who moves well, but you know, when you get him caught out of position like that and you wide open net for St. Louis, uh, he's not gonna miss that very often. Huge turn of events. We talked about killing off that power play they did, they drew their own power play and then they score on it, so that's a huge, huge shift in momentum for the Saints. The Butte leads it two to one, 205 into the third. It's dumped in, Saints end to the left, and they will start forward. St. Louis, it's his fourth of the year, all four of them on the power play. His last one coming as the overtime winner in Fargo last Friday. This one giving the Saints their first lead of the night in a big game against Youngstown. Aaron, left circle, offensive end, the shot, he scores! 24 seconds later, Charlie Aaron puts the Saints up by two. The Saints went coast to coast all the way down, dumped the puck in, they worked it free, Aaron at the bottom of the left circle, snuck it underneath the blocker of Artiskevich, and the Saints with two goals in 24 seconds to take a 3-1 lead, 2.29 into the third. It looked like Artiskevich was hugging the post, and it looked like he was gonna be able to stop it, but somehow it just kind of snuck through, and Aaron has a huge goal that to give the Fighting Saints even more momentum after scoring that power play goal. Uh, Saints are gonna freeze the puck here. And, but again, Charlie Aaron, what if, just put the puck on net. You know, there really wasn't a whole lot to shoot, on, shoot at. And I think, I thought Bartoskevich had that, the post sealed off really well. And, and he was able to just sneak it through and it just trickled across the goal line. And again, that's a huge goal for Charlie Aaron to put the Saints up by two. talked about Teddy Merrill kind of earlier in the night. Goals in back-to-back -back games, that bottom six producing non-stop for the Saints. Aaron, he has his fourth of the year. He had an assist last night. He now has 11 points so far this season. Saints lead it three to one. The face off in their own end. They move it to center. Bobbled by Romeo, and it's taken right back in by Chua, his centering feed, tipped away. Romeo out the center, he's upended. It will be a penalty against Youngstown as they touch up, and the Saints are gonna head right back to the power play, up by two, 256 in to the third. Noah Powell, the only assist, and Pittner will go sit for a trip, so the Saints 
head to the power play looking to go up by three. It's a much better start to the third period than they had last night. And it seemed like the Saints came out with a lot more, a lot more firepower, a lot more aggressiveness. And, you know, they, pulled, they got right back into the Saki game and got the lead, two goal lead. They move back to the point. They just scored on the power play. Paul Karsik left side. Reader hammers it through the slot, looking for St. Louis on that same play, but he missed them on the pass. It goes to center. Saints move back into the offensive end. On the power play, it's chipped up the wall, and it goes out to center pass Vizen. 135 left on the Saints power play. It's their sixth of the night. Their last one was their first conversion on the fifth attempt. They're back in their own zone starting ahead. Three and a half into the third. They've already scored twice in the third, separated by 24 seconds. Sandriel hammers it around back. It comes to the top of the zone. And then St. Louis pass to Vizen and he bobbles it out to center. Saints will regroup in the neutral zone. Right back in offensive end. Reader left side on the power play for another 103. Early in the third, Saints up two. Pekarsik tries to feed Bison in. It's tipped to center. Bison in starts it right back ahead. Pekarsik twirls at the top of the circles. Off to the right side. St. Louis out in front looking for Reader. It was blocked. Cornforth picks up right circle. Charges down to the corner. Turns back up top. Powell walks the line. Left side. Pekarsik top of the circle. Side of the net for Reader. Out in front. It's loose. Cornforth digs it free. And then it's chopped out. Pass Seamus Powell out to center. Powell right back in. Offensive end on the power play, he lost it. It goes out to center. Four and a half into the third, 25 to go on the power play. Saints starting ahead, corn four turns back. The power play goal from St. Louis, from Sandriol and Reeder. They're back in on the power play. Dick drops back to Barron, far circle. He'll turn to the point, 10 on the power play. Seamus Powell steps up, left circle. Goes down low, his shot tipped wide. Barron stumps it back in front, it's loose in the blue paint. They dig away and then it's cleared by Youngstown, and that will do it for the power play. Saints can't convert. Five gone in the third, Saints with two early in this period to take a 3-1 lead. Moving left to right, Merrill across the blue line, offensive end, he dumps in. Horn fourth, far corner. Seal to the wall, it's chopped back in front. Veronin will pick it up. Merrill seals him to the boards, but Veronin sneaks by him. Into the Saints end, left wing, he'll flip it wide of the net. Off the end wall, Young. 5.20 into the third, Saints up 3-1. Puck in behind the Dubuque net. Scott up the wall, chopped ahead by Merrill, out to center. St. Louis fourth of the year at 155. Sandriel and, and Reader the assists. Charlie Aaron then scoring a minute later, less than a minute later, Noah Powell the assist. The Saints taking a penalty in center. And the whistle comes as Aaron will go sit for a trip. Saints need to try and stay out of the box, but they're headed to the Crawford North penalty kill. When we come back, leading 3-1 to one in the third. Finning, 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 finning. You're winning with Finning. When you drive away in a Finning car, you're winning with Finning. And you're always treated like a superstar. You're winning with Finning. Take pride in customer loyalty. We're leaders in the community. So come on down and you will see. Finning, finning, finning. You're winning with Finning. Finning. 5.45 into the third. They have sent Patilla off to the box as well as Charlie Aaron. Still nothing on the board yet. The Saints lead it three to one. Early in this third period, Jim Saints on top. Wanna to try and stay out of the box and hold a lead late in this game. Yeah, I'm wondering, we're waiting to see it. I wonder if it was a 10 minute misconduct from Patilla. They haven't put anything up on there. But again, yeah, you wanna stay off the, you wanna stay off the power play or keep Youngstown off the power play in this situation. You don't want to give them a goal or an opportunity to score a power play goal and get back in within a goal here. So uh, it still looks like, I, I'm assuming that's going to be a 10 minute misconduct because they haven't put anything on the board for, for Patilla. That's really the only thing it could be without them putting anything up. It, it didn't look like he did anything, so I'm a, a, a guessing that he might have said something and that just uh, 
said the wrong phrase in front of the official, and that's what uh, got him a 10. He's a valuable player, though. It's going to be it's going to be tough for him to, you know, it's going to be a big loss for them to have him sit for 10 minutes. Patilla entered the weekend leading the team in goals. He's tied for the team lead still with eight. He's not on the power play here. Saints can't win the draw on the penalty kill to start it off. The shot goes wide, and then Reeder clears all the way down. It is a misconduct. Ten minutes on Patilla. The Saints. On the penalty kill for 140 longer. 6-10 into the third. Saints lead it 3-1. Puck bouncing to center. Reeder trying to muscle into the offensive zone. He has Sandriol trying to split the D. He was sealed off. Clark to center. Right to left. Stopped at the red line. And it's picked back up by Youngstown. So 120 left on the power play for the Phantoms. 13 and a half to go in the game. 3-1 Saints. Two early third period goals separated by less than 30 seconds have tied or have put the Saints on top breaking a tie Buck into the Saints end Youngstown can't hold on and Dubuque clears halfway through the penalty kill 13-10 left in regulation 3-1 Saints Youngstown right to left Gunty into the Dubuque end rips it around the back up the wall McLaughlin to the point his pass intercepted by King he can't clear past Pittner Right side, Botterill, top of the circle. Steps down low, the snapshot, he missed it wide. And it goes out to center off the end glass. All the way back down. 30 to go on the kill. Aaron sitting in the box for a trip. 12.45 left in the third. Saints up two. Botterill right to left. McLaughlin into the zone, drops back to the point. It goes by Pittner out to center. These two teams, 23 points each after 15 games, tied at the top of the East. 12.28 left in the third. It is three to one, Saints. They stop Youngstown in center and dump it back in. Seven seconds left on the penalty kill. Gunty chips to center for Veronin. Ahead to Bonneril, into the Saints end. Aaron out of the box. Veronin in the slot, sealed off. Noah Powell charges forward, three on two for the Saints. Left to right, Dick into the zone. Look, looking at cross ice, his shot. Flubbed down by Bartoskevich, loose. Tip toward the blue paint, they dig away. Still loose, Youngstown scoops it ahead out to center. Veronin, a huge hit by Teddy Merrill. And we'll see if there will be a penalty called, it looks like. As Veronin goes down, a whistle immediately. The Saints are gonna head right back to the penalty kill with 11.54 to go in the third. Let's just hope this isn't a five. Violent collision at center ice. It looked like Veronin just didn't have his head up. And Merrill got him got him flush. So they're gonna discuss this to see if there's gonna be a five or a ten or five or a two. Yeah, Veronin was head down all the way, trying to skate through center. Merrill immediately looked like he realized. Sometimes hit him up high. when you're in that situation, sometimes you just don't have, I mean, the game happens so fast. You know, you, you don't intend to do that, but sometimes you have to protect yourself and you end up hurting the other guy. And uh, I'd be surprised if he stays in this game. I mean, looks like he's okay. He's shaking it off a little bit, he's a little bit stung, but he's gonna be done for the night. Merrill's gonna be done for the night. It's so gonna be a five and a 10. Yeah, they're going to give him a major for head contact. Kurt McDonald will want an explanation. And this, not what the Saints want, up by two with 11.54 to play. They're going to have to kill off a five minute major power play. The second time this year, They've had to face a major power play. They killed off the other one against Green Bay early in the season. This is a you know key situation. You can score as many goals as you want in this five-minute power play. And uh, I, th I think Fighting Saints penalty kill. The penalty kill has been good here, though. I, I will say that. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a, a huge task against a pretty good power play. It's a good puck moving players on, on Youngstown, so it's gonna be a tough task, but 
Like I said, I think the Saints penalty kill has been pretty sharp tonight. Ryan Aronson will serve the penalty for Merrill. Face off Saints end to the left, 11.54 to play, third period, 3-1 Saints. They've scored twice early in this third period, once on the power play, now they have to kill off a five minute major. Pass across from Burchill, intercepted by Bison, and he swats all the way down. This Youngstown power play, 17.6% coming into the night. So far, 0 for 3 in this game. Saints holding them at bay, but five minutes to kill. 20 seconds gone on it, 11 and a half to play. Puck turned down the wall, outletted by the Saints. Reeder storms into the offensive zone. He's ripped down, crashing into the end wall. No call, and Youngstown will move ahead. Four and a half to go on the penalty. Youngstown right to left, Saints in. Near wing, Serrato leaves to the point for Strathman. Walks the line, right wing, Burchill. He scored a power play goal on a five on three early in the third last night. Serrato left circle to rip. It's stopped by Raidler underneath his arm. Pins it to his side and covers up. 4.13 left on the kill for the Saints. 11.06 to go in the third. It's a 3-1 Dubuque lead. Penalty kill in the first minute or so getting the job done. They have, yep, they've, they've made a couple of nice clears to you know just take away opportunities. They pressured the puck a little bit. And they're not really giving Youngstown a chance to move the puck as quickly as they'd like and you know create that good open door look on the back, on the back end. Powell taking the draw against Clark. Noah Powell wins, scoops it ahead, but not out. Strathman down the wall for Serrato. He'll twirl it to the circle. Svoboda went down. He gets it to the point for Strathman. D.D.D. D. Wilson back to Strathman, center point. The shot flips through, deflected, and goes wide, and then Malba clears. 3.50 to go on the kill. It's a major penalty. Teddy Merrill out of the game because of a hit on Veronim. Head contact called against him. Saints back at their own blue line, able to clear back ahead with Malibu. Ten and a half to play in the third. 3-1 Saints, three and a half to go on a major penalty kill. Crawford North PK, five for five tonight so far. Ahead of this power play. Jubinville swats up the far wall, can't get out of his own end. Youngstown had dumped it in. Jubinville gets another chance, bounces it off the wall and out past Wilson. Botterill will go back to center, 3.15 on the kill for the Saints. 10.05 left in the third, it's a 3-1 game. Dubuque, two goals early in the third, separated by just under 30 seconds. The difference right now, teams tied with 23 points each atop the East in the USHL so far. Wilson, center point, left side, power play for Youngstown, the shot kicked away by Raidler. The Saints find a rebound and clear. 9.45 to play. A two goal lead for Dubuque. Killing off a major penalty. 2.45 left on it. Just about halfway through the five minutes. Wilson starts ahead, right to left. Svoboda turns it over in center. Reeder moves in, offensive zone. Tried to weave to the slot. He was stopped. St. Louis chopped it ahead. And Reeder plays all the way back to his own end. Kalen Dick settles and will clear all the way down. 9.15 to play. Bartoskevich plays to the near wall. Reeder forces it free and then backhands all the way back down to his own end of the left. Dick will find there. Outlets to St. Louis and his pass goes backward again. The Saints blast all the way down. Great job on the penalty kill. Nine to play in the third. Just two left on the major penalty. Nothing doing for Youngstown yet. 3-1 lead for Dubuque. Strathman right to left. Into the Saints end. His pass to the wing. No one there for Youngstown. Sandri all clears. Bartoskevich behind his own net, leaves it 145 on the power play for Youngstown. It was a five minute major. The Saints have not allowed much yet for Youngstown on this penalty. Eight and a half to go, 3-1 Saints in the third. Moving ahead with the Saints line, Powell intercepts, scoops to center. Youngstown tips right back in. Bison in chases in his own zone, in behind the net. Flips up the wall. Noah Powell with some time, and he will clear to center. 120 left on the five-minute major penalty. Gunty in his own end, starting the Phantoms ahead. 8.05 to play. 3-1 Saints. Saints trying to take sole possession of first place in the Eastern Conference. They move ahead and swat all the way down the ice from Paulson on his backhand. Bartoskevich has to leave the net to play. Into the final minute of a five-minute major penalty kill. 
Saints dropping back to their own end. Seamus Powell intercepts and clears. Saints really doing a good job at their own blue line on this penalty kill. 7.35 to go in the third. It's a 3-1 to Buke lead. Wilson all the way back in his own end. Starts forward for Youngstown, right to left. Far wing, it's Pittner across the Saints blue line. Svoboda drops to the point. Wilson across the blue line. Has Botteril feed back to the right circle. Pittner rips and hit a body in front. Bounces to the side. Swatted for not out by the Saints. Wilson center point, 20 to go on the power play for Youngstown, right circle. Pittner, the shot, hit away by Raylor, up to the point, Wilson down the wall, left wing. Botteril ahead, his shot saved by Raylor. Powell clears, and with 7-0-1 left in the third, the Saints have just about killed off a whole five minute major penalty kill. Aronson out of the box, and the Saints proper north penalty kill, a huge one, kills off all five minutes, Keeps a 3-1 lead, 6.45 to play in the third. Youngstown on the puck, moving ahead right to left. Back at full strength. Turn in the, the sold out crowd, trying to move the Saints on to victory as the puck is batted around in the Saints end. In behind the net, Malba chops it forward, it's loose, up the wall. Osborne there, Ronaldo as well. Youngstown comes away with it, Smith. Out in front, Sandro intercepts and clears the center. All the way back to the Youngstown zone with 6-10 to play. A 3-1 lead for the Saints. Youngstown just failing to score on a five-minute major power play. Saints Crawford North PK. Six for six tonight. That's six donations to youth hockey from Crawford North. Dubuque in its own end. Starting ahead, Aronson pokes it forward. The pass was in between his legs. He's then able to shovel it out. Saints will change lines. 5.45 to play. Third period, Saints up 3-1. It was tied at one after two. Two early goals in the third for the Saints. One on the power play. Making the difference so far, 3-1 game. Serrato out in front, the shot from Ramos. Why? Pekarsic can't clear, but it goes in behind. And St. Louis will pick it up. Twirls out of a check from Serrato. Falls down, lost the puck, turned in front, but Kalen Vick there for the Saints. Skates to center, chips it ahead. Pumped right back into Buchan. It's Ramos toward the slot. Saints intercept. Dick can't clear again. Second try. Paulson steers to center. 5.05 to play. Third period. It's a 3-1 game. Saints on top. Left side. Paulson into the offensive zone. Across the blue line. Cornford pokes it into space on the near wing. And then Youngstown cranks it off the glass to center. Jubinville. Can't settle a bouncing puck. Bottero right side into the Saints end. Gunty centering P, tipped by Cornforth and picked up by Pekarsic. He'll weave the center. Left wing for Aaron. Back in front looking for Pekarsic. It was swatted on net. And Bartoskevich plays it ahead. Aaron keeps in at the point. Frank right side, top of the circle. Twirls back, high slot. Aaron steps up, the rip. Saved by Bartoskevich. It goes in behind. Strathman plays to the corner wall and ahead for Bottero. His outlet with 4.20 left in the third. Taken by Dubuque at his own blue line. Seamus Powell on the tape. Colin Frank into the zone. Right side, offensive end. Out in front, one-timer. Noah Powell missed it wide. He was all alone in front. Into the corner, Gunty lost it. Frank back up to the top of the zone. Powell trying to sneak through a couple phantoms. He lost it. And it's into the neutral zone. Seamus Powell right back in. Noah Powell chasing in behind. Saints win it. Four to play. Frank back toward the top. It's intercepted by Smith, and he charges ahead. Saints up 3-1. Smith, Dubuque end of the uh, to the left on the right wing. His shot was blocked up and out into the neutral zone by the Saints. Taken by Clark at the blue line for Youngstown. Right to left. 3.35 to play. Bartoskevich staying in the net for now for Youngstown. Osborne all the way back to his own end. Twirls away from Reeder. Starts the Phantoms ahead. Dubuque leads three to one. Two goals early in the third. The difference played all the way in on Raidler. He covers up 319 to play. A three to one Saints lead late in the third. Patilla's 10 minute misconduct penalty has expired. So he's uh, he's available for the last 319th of this period. We'll have to see how soon the, uh, the Phantoms want to choose to, to uh, Pull Bartoshevic. They're well, going to they do it right. Do it right now. They're yeah. going to do it right now with an offensive zone draw. 3:19 left. Third period. Saints lead three to one. 
Both teams still have their timeouts. Reeder, near side in his own end to the left. Empty net for Youngstown. Saints can't win the draw. The shot and block. Extra man on for Youngstown. The second shot blocked by Sandriel. It stung him. He stuck his right foot out. He's going to go off to the bench. Saints chip at the center. 3.05 to play. Puck hops high in the air, bouncing and goes out of play. 3.01 left, and we'll see if they move Bardaskevich back in. It will be a timeout from Ryan Ward on the Youngstown bench. So Jim, 3-1 Saints, 3.01 left. Bardaskevich for now pulled. We'll see where they put this face off. It looks like it will be at center ice. I would have to imagine they're going to put him back in the net. Maybe to the hash. Yeah, he's going back in. Maybe put him out at the hash marks uh, so it's a little bit shorter of a trip to uh, to get back to the bench. But, uh, yeah, I agree with this. I, if I'm them, I, I would certainly pull the goaltender 301 to go. They had that five-minute major, and they really didn't get anything going. So uh, at this point, you can't rely on what you're going to do five-on-five five against the fighting Saints. So you got to have that man advantage. Uh, with the goaltender pulled, so uh, at 301 is sometimes that's a lot of time. But you know, you get that first one, and uh, you get it to within three two. It's a whole new ball game. You're one shot away from tying it up. So I, I, I think this is a good move by uh, Youngstown to, to try to get back, uh, back within a goal. With a two goal game, Saints on top. 301 to play. Teams tied at the top of the Eastern Conference in the USHL. 23 points apiece. Center ice faceoff, Artiskevich is back in the net after the Youngstown timeout. Faceoff will be Paulson for the Saints, Clark for Youngstown. Buck down, it is won by Youngstown. Strathman holds on, Artiskevich will head straight to the bench. The extra skater on for Youngstown. Empty net, 250 to play. Saints up two, Puck rattled in deep. Raylor out of the net, tries to play it out to center himself. He has pulse into the neutral zone, across the red line. Right wing, court force, into the empty net. Four to one, Saints, 2.41 to play. Court force, second of the night, and debut. Get some insurance with the empty cage for Youngstown. It's a 4-1, Saints lead. What a third period by the Fighting Saints. You know, they really they really own this period. And, you know, I know last night Coach McDonald talked about, hey, if we get four goals, you know, we're going to win more often than not. They got four goals last night, but they gave up five. They had too many gimmies. Uh, tonight they have four, and they played much sounder defense to keep uh, Youngstall off the board. So that race to four is uh, certainly going to be won here by the fighting saints and you know a lot of that has to do with the defense they've played and really not allowing youngstown anything they win the draw dump in offensive end for debut there's still two and a half minutes to play in this game corn fourth his tenth of the season second of the night Saints in their own end. Right side, it's Ramos, the shot up high. Raylor makes the stop. Rebound try, stuffed on. Malba blocks it. And then the Saints go into the corner. Chopped in the air, leaves behind the net. St. Louis comes away with it. Turned around in the corner wall. It's loose there. 2.05 to play. Bartoskevich staying in the net. The only assist on Corn Force empty netter for Eric Paulson. Puck down low, Saints pick it up. St. Louis ahead, Malbuff up the wall. A delayed call against Youngstown and they touch up. Cross check called and the Saints with 153 left. Headed to the power play, up four to one. They usually don't want to take a penalty 200 feet away from your own net, but at this point of the game, it's, it's pretty much uh, Pretty much a done deal. I don't know if they're going to give him more than just a two. They're giving him the gate. So maybe a two and a ten. Looks like it's going to be a two and a ten for their Chua. 13th floor. Yeah. 13th floor forward, Chula. The 153 to play. Young has to send someone across to serve the penalty. Saints really turned it on from the second period on. Their start wasn't great. Played a really good second, and they just stepped on it to start the third. Took a lead early and haven't looked back. Dubuque 
leading it four to one. A five minute penalty kill in this third period. Also helping the Saints move along to a 4-1 lead. 1.40 to play, puck turned all the way down. Saints on the power play for the rest of regulation, unless they convert left to right. Powell into the offensive zone. Across ice, left side, he'll turn back to center, and it is out to the neutral zone. Kubota into the Saints end as Burchill, the shot saved by Rayleigh. Just two minutes for hitting from behind is the call on Chua. Not sure exactly why he was sent to the dressing room. They only announced the two minute minor. Far side, it is Dick on the far wall. Offensive end for the Saints. Two Saints spill. They work the puck to the point. In the final minute of regulation. Dick, high slot, corn fourth. He has two tonight. To the near circle for Paulson. Working to the slot, corn fourth, pass behind him. And it's cleared all the way down by Youngstown. 45 seconds left, Saints on the power play late in regulation, leading it four to one, but they ice the puck here on the power play. In front of a sold out crowd tonight, the first of the season, Dubuque will come out atop the Eastern Conference tonight. And good, and you know, it's a great bounce back after last night. They were not happy with the way they performed last night in all aspects of the game. and. Uh, you know, they made some adjustments tonight and played back to their identity tonight, and they're going to get a convincing win out of this and get right back to sole possession of first place. Face off, Saints end to the left. They win it. Seamus Powell in behind his own net with 30 seconds left. Dubuque holding on in its own net. Saints have been giving up some goals recently. Only one allowed tonight. They're back into the offensive zone, but it's then swatted out to the neutral zone. 20 seconds left. Saints on the power play at the end of regulation here, Chick-fil-A power play. Offensive end, Bison in, wraps it in behind the net with 10 seconds to play. Reader to the point, St. Louis. Across ice, Pekarsik steps up, couldn't get the shot away. Final five seconds, puck out to center, Bison in picks it up, and the Saints in front of a sold out crowd on military appreciation night. Win it, four to one over the Youngstown Phantoms and take sole possession of first place in the USHL Eastern Conference. Saints surround Kevin Rayler, who was outstanding tonight. 24 saves on 25 shots. And Dubuque ends up with three out of four points this weekend. And they head on to a road trip next weekend on top of the East. Jim. Just an outstanding last 40 minutes for the Saints tonight. No question about it. And it was, and it was special teams that kind of really yeah. led the way. You know, we, we talked about last night they didn't play to their identity. In that first period, I don't think they did either. But uh, credit to them to making those adjustments over the last 40 minutes and, and making a difference. And, and you're exactly right, special teams. A big power play goal by Ryan St. Louis. The five-minute major kill. Uh, great effort all the way around by the Fighting Saints. And... Uh, what a better, there's no better way to celebrate military appreciation night than to, to have an effort like that. Well, the Fighting Saints win it four to one. We will take a break and we'll come back on the Exit Realty post game show to wrap it all up for you. Four to one, Fighting Saints win it over the Phantoms.